like an albatross around the neck. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Welcome back, everyone, to another uh, bonus episode of uh, The Dark Parade. This one is, of course, uh, The Heart of Horror. Uh, quite frankly, I believe it's the flagship show of all of this <laughs> because of <laughs> how uh, graphic, horrifying, and uh, and borderline illegal <laughs> much of this discussion is. Uh, I think you'll find it's educational, most of all. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, of course, is my, my co-host, the the partner in crime, the person without whom uh, none of this would be possible, and that is Kate Pollock. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Hi. And, and we have a, a third, a third wheel, which we've only done one time we before. Brought, we brought in a third. That's right. It, it was time to get a sexy threesome <laughs> happening again. We, we did it one time. We were the and, guy, and now it's only fair we do it with a girl. Right. And the first time it was a little awkward, and maybe we like didn't talk so much the day after. But then... <laughs> Look each other quite in the eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then enough time passed, and we were like, you know what would be great? Let's try that threesome thing again. Except this time, use your pinky. You know where. <laughs> and so... <laughs> so we have with us... Uh, uh, someone that Kate has recorded with before, but this is my my first time, so I'm very excited. And that is Sabrina, a resident hot goth chick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome. I mean, thank you for welcoming me <laughs> to your threesome. I'm really flustered. Can you tell? Yeah. Well, you know, it's oh. me. And it's Bo, not my you... first, but um, oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not your first either. Apparently. So. Oh no, it's not. No, it's a not. sloppy fact, seconds. Actually, I'll take it. A, we've been in a threesome before. You and I? Yeah. When you... With Nick? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Wait, Matt, did we show up ass. to different threesomes? <laughs> Not in real life, I mean... I mean in recording. I'm using the metaphor because we have recorded with Matt in a threesome before. Yes. <laughs> We're on different wavelengths. It's fine. Well, this is starting perfectly. Um, so good. Yeah. This, this is all very good stuff. I mean, we're learning things about one another already. That's that's what the show is here for. And frankly, um, a lot of people have commented about how much they are enjoying the show lately. And, <laughs> yes. And, and that does my, my it does my heart good, uh, as well as other parts of the anatomy, which we'll get to. <laughs> well, it is great. I love it. I love. I mean, it's the it's fun to listen to. You guys are a lot of fun. Oh, thanks. That's Why very thank kind. You. Yeah, it, it's fun. I Because uh, I record these so late at night. So for me now, it's like 2 a.m. And uh, and I also generally do drink. Mm-hmm. And I have ADHD. So like my memory after recording is pretty much like, what the fuck did we talk about? What film did we cover? So I'll like listen back and then it, it's like, it's like, you know, the morning after when you start remembering bits that you've done from the night before. Uh-huh. And oh, shit shit like oh fuck i said that oh i told that story oh fuck no stop to- kate stop talking <laughs> you know yeah and um, i'm probably this- not good about telling you to stop no you are really bad we need safe words i feel but for like the opposite where you feel like i'm going too far from myself and i'm just there like kate you, know, you give freedom. so much to the podcast by not having a safe word mm-hmm. <laughs> yes but at what cost <laughs> well i'm still disturbed by multiple of the stories you've brought to the table but they haven't been about you Mm-mm. so i'm like mm, okay i can look at you in the eye still oh yeah like the menthos and stuff mm-hmm. we are right, speaking mm-hmm. of let's let's get right to filth the last time <laughs> <I'm supposed laughs> to what? yes I've, I've got wholesome stories later don't even worry about it yeah, we're going to actually have a fairly wholesome episode, I feel. Yeah. And wholesome as in good, not H-O-L-E-some. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. I showed up to the wrong party. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just get our bags and go. <laughs> no, this is uh, the the story that you told about the maggots. Oh, it, yeah. And I had follow-up questions. Were you able yeah. to, to, to get yeah, any right, further yeah. information? So, yeah, so I did, I did ask about it, mm-hmm. and... Um, it, they did go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, and 
aside from that, they don't know, like my friend didn't actually really know what else happened with it. But they did go to the hospital and apparently there was like, um, like a, you know, like not a water shoot, but like they flushed them all out. Right. Kind of a... And I think it was, yeah, I think to be honest, the, it was fairly mundane. I think they just flushed them out and, and she thinks that they gave her um, like some, uh, just some antibiotics. And it was, that was kind of it. Like it is a bit of a, an anticlimax. Well, not initially. Probably for the probably <laughs> for, for the best. Not. Yeah, I like yeah, I just I just don't I don't need that story to get any more gross or outlandish. I'm I'm happy. I say happy. I'm tolerant of <laughs> of where it ended last time. Um but yeah, so yeah, no, I think it was just they went to the hospital, got them flushed out and got some antibiotics at the end. <laughs> um it doesn't make for a very good sequel. All right. Well Sorry. I, I well no no no, that's fine. I just I felt like for housekeeping reasons. I, I needed to resolve that at least partially for myself yeah yeah um yeah that's yeah it was, it was the you know the girl in question was fine okay good <laughs> um all right so on this episode ladies and jelly spoons we will be discussing uh a movie that is both somewhat appropriate and to everything we've ever talked about <laughs> because yeah. the, this show <laughs> Is about nothing if not hot goths. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, of which there are abundance in this film. This is maybe the most hot goth movie of all time. Yeah. yeah. There are others that are contenders, but I feel like this one holds the crown. All right, well, this one sort of sets a precedence. Yeah. All right, so that begs the question. All right, obviously, we're talking about The Crow. Uh, <laughs> just to get that out of the way but i only rushed through that to say what are the other contenders for a, a hot goth movie of the universe well i mean we've already covered edward scissorhands mm -hmm. that's like got some hot cloth vibes yeah uh, can i put one forward that maybe won't come off as entirely goth but it's definitely got some goth vibes to it i well. think i know what you're gonna say and i was gonna say it go so right. Ooh. Um, I was going to say Mad Max. I got some Mad Max vibes watching this, just in kind of their outfits and the obscurities mm. of oh. the things they say and the things they do. But my mind always goes back to Mad Max. I mean, of course it does. Yeah. No, yeah, of course it does. Um, that's not what I was actually thinking. I was thinking Byzantium. Oh, is... that's pretty good. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. I like... mean, always. Yeah, it's not like goth, 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 but it's definitely dramatic and vampy and hot. So hashtag hot. moist hashtag moist yeah so sabrina when we, she came on my other show uh we this was one of the films that we covered and uh this is where you remember i said i think it was last time and i said hashtag moist and it was like oh yeah we used that a lot on my other show that's because of that episode <laughs> i think it was like like 30 uh, times it was an insane amount yeah yeah that we said moist and um, <laughs> now it's just kind of become a bit of a tagline to our show um and it's now kind of like seeped it's way into this show. It's trickled. Yeah. It's trickled. Hashtag moist. Hashtag moist. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, that film is definitely hashtag moist. Um, but, yeah, otherwise, you could maybe argue a bit of Candyman. A little bit? Uh, a little maybe. bit. I, I was going to say The Craft. I feel like The Craft has. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Big goth energy. Big oh, goth yeah. energy. You know, we've talked yeah. about Fer uh, Feruza Balk on this program already, yeah. and hagada hagada heart. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wholeheartedly agreed. Yeah. So I'm just now, I'm um, just thinking of Feruza Balk now. Yeah, we can all take a moment. Uh, <laughs> can we all just take a minute? Yeah, we need a Feruza moment on this show where just we just for, need a moment of yeah, silence. Yeah, uh, 60 seconds of silence while we all think about <laughs> Feruza Balk and what she could bring to our lives. Um, all right, that's hog enough. And okay. <laughs> as with uh, with every episode, not only have we picked a theme, um, or have we picked a movie, but we've also picked a theme. Uh, yeah. Scratch that, reverse it. And <laughs> the the theme of this one, as proposed by uh, Kate, is no, no, as proposed by Sabrina. Actually, it oh. was just yeah. Sorry, Apologies. I just no, no. So no, it was all Sabrina. Uh, so we're talking about soulmates. Yes. And mm -hmm. I will begin my fire across the bow here about this, about soulmates, our discussion of that, by saying I do not necessarily believe in a single soulmate. 
Nor yeah. do I. Neither do I. I, I think so there... this will be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I like the consensus. <laughs> to shit all over this film. <laughs> but I do think that there are a number of people. I, I just mean that there's not that one person wandering around in the world that if you happen to miss them at the A&P, then you're just screwed for life. Yeah. <laughs> But that there you can are... never know happiness, <laughs> right? Yeah, like you know. My... Oh, sorry, hot goth aesthetic. Just thought of another one, Crimson Peak. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's like on. old school goth aesthetic. Yeah, that's like the Victorian gothic kind of steampunk mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, sorry. Carry on. Yeah, I mean, but you can go that way with a lot of Del Toro. Then, like, yeah, like uh, some of the Hellboy stuff. Has mm-hmm. some goth in oh, it yeah. for sure, yeah. and anything where there's buckles, basically. Mm-hmm. Oh, Blade <laughs> Two? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you could even. Oh yeah, Blade Two. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we could yeah. go on. Yeah, carry on. Sorry. No, no, no. This is what we're here for. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. So I think that there are there are personality types that are kind of your soulmate. Mm-hmm. and yeah. you know there's that combination of of quirks and weirdness and and beliefs and values and all that stuff and so there's a handful of people out in the world that will do it for you mm-hmm. and when you find that person though because there's i i do think it's a finite number i think you you know you can end up being in lots of bad relationships in pursuit of that but if you do find that person that is the right combination of all those things then I still think that qualifies as soulmate because that is somebody that you can you, you can live the dream, right? Which is to be purely yourself with someone, yeah, without fear of of judgment or recrimination, or that you know that that judgment is is muted by the fact that both of you know, like, yeah, all right, well, we're both weirdos, so <laughs> you know, yeah, I think for me when it comes to soulmates i don't believe in it in like a relationship sense i think you can be with the right person at the right time and whether that is a few years or whatnot but i do believe in it in terms of friendship and i would like to say and be all mushy gushy here kate is my absolute soulmate absolute soulmate yeah me too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah no like okay so like real quick breakdown me and sabrina have only known each other for what like um a year and a year half? and a half maybe two years like coming up two years maybe oh, fuck i can't remember um and uh and we've never met in real life but we talk every single day and if there's not if, the, if we don't talk it's weird like both of us feel very out of sorts like it's just yeah and like it's been like that from almost the get-go and we just we always joke that we're kind of like the same person i've made jokes that we're tethered Mm -hmm. you know yes um and it's just a very kind of organic totally by chance kind of like interaction and um and this very organic friendship has, has developed as a result and uh yeah like i i can't imagine a day going by without talking to sabrina and then like i have um, and then like, again, I also feel kind of like, just to like add on to that, like, I also feel like you can kind of have more than one deep connection like that. Like, cause, and again, it's more of a friendship thing. Cause like out with Sabrina, like my oldest, one of my oldest friends, who's like my sister, um, is my, you know, is one of my oldest friends, best friends, Kaylee. And like she, and I would say like, she knows me. So we're very different. So me and Sabrina are very, very similar, but me and Kaylee are very, very different. But Kaylee knows me better than I know myself sometimes. Like she knows exactly what's going on in my head and I can't fucking work it out for shit, you know, (laughs) and vice versa. So, and it's like a different type of friendship, but like both are just, I can't imagine my life being without either one of these people. Whereas like guys or girls, like in a romantic sense in that way, kind of like, I feel the same as Sabrina in terms of just like you can have people who are great for you in that moment, but that doesn't necessarily mean forever. But it doesn't mean to say that in that moment that that isn't amazing and it's not fire and it's not, you know, ah, uh, you know, all that stuff. But it just, I don't know, like I just feel like, like you saying, Bo, you know, it's not just one person wandering around going, pick me, pick me, you know. Um, and it's it can be like you can have a deep connection with someone and it not necessarily have to be forever. Like it's that phrase, isn't it? You know, I'm not... I'm not Mr. Right and Mr. Right now, but I just feel like for me, like that's just how things are. And I know that that's not the same for everyone. Mm. You know, obviously people do spend their entire lives with the same person, but like, I also don't think that that's the only way to be. Like I've been 
like discovering a lot of things about myself recently and one of the things I've discovered is actually probably I'm not one of these people who is supposed to who can have like an all my life type of relationship in that way like I just I just not who I am but it doesn't mean to say though that when I am with someone that I'm not all in or that it's you know it's any less special it's just it might not last forever kind of thing you know yeah I think you can't generalize seven billion people You know, everyone's going to love differently. And, you know, some people are going to be with one person their whole life and, you know, just feel this undying love and other people have to work really hard to stay with the people they're they're with. And then some people just want to just kind of have that honeymoon phase at all times. Right. And all those options are okay. Yeah, I think I'm that one. (laughs) I just (laughs) I just need the dopamine, (laughs) you know. (laughs) <laughs> um I like yeah I don't have a lot of it so I just I need that dopamine fix and as soon as that starts going away I'm like nah right on who's no who's next who can give me that <laughs> let, let me tell you something my girlfriend said to me that was one of the most like backhanded compliments oh. of all time <laughs> love those <laughs> yeah and and she meant it as nothing but a positive okay but we were so just this past weekend as we record this Mm. um we went away for the weekend like we got just a a hotel room somewhere and Mm. went and hung out and ate great food and you know did like tours of the city and and dumb stuff like that i had a really good time yeah it was great we had a wonderful time and on the back end of it and we were joking on the way up like well this is the longest we're we'll have spent together just uninterrupted and so we'll have a pretty good idea on the other side of this if one of us wants to kill the other person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we had a wonderful time. And uh, but I was I, and as we were kind of packing things up, I, you know, I said to her, uh, and I can say whatever I want here because she'll never listen to this. Um, <laughs> so so safe, I, space, safe, 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 safe. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, but I, I was saying, like, th- this was great. And, you know, we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to get a chair like they had in the room because that figured into a little bit of the shenanigans we got up oh, to. Okay, and it was okay. really fun. Okay. And she said, yeah, that, that would be fun. And she said, <laughs> and here comes the backhanded compliment. Um, she says, you know, but that's not the important thing because – you know, in a couple of years, we won't really be able to do this anymore on account of you being older, but we can always have fun together. And I was like, wait a second, do you think when I hit 50, just <laughs> everything stops working? Like, I got to go get one of them pumps or something? And she's like, no, you know what I mean? I was like, a couple of years. Like, I feel like I got a little more in the tank than that. Um, has she seen X? Right? Uh, yeah, right. No, she hasn't, but I'll show it okay. to her. Yeah, so, that's next viewing for you guys. Yes, definitely show her X. Also, like, I want proof of life because you said that you guys might murder each other, and I don't know that she's still alive, so. This is yeah, true, that's fine. yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Um, um, I, I feel like you should you should put on X, right? But just not say anything. Don't like, you know, and just just side eye her as the <laughs> as the old people sex kind of comes on. Just you know, sit like just saying. Yeah, be like just, just saying. They just hit fifty. Right. Yeah. Like right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in a couple of years, we won't be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds like your next date night for sure yeah mm-hmm. it was it was very fun the other thing i will uh, get this out of the way also here's the other big uh it, ongoing story of my relationships so we had been really measured about hey let's make sure that you and i are compatible and we're enjoying you know this relationship and so forth before we get into kid stuff you know because she has a couple of kids yeah and so we have reached that point, and so now I am hip deep in children. Oh, because last time we recorded, it was very much a kind of mm, we'll see how this goes. Right, and so she was so like, "Now you're like deep, deep, knee deep in regrets." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just yesterday, they were here all day because she was in the process of moving, and so oh. while she was doing some stuff, they stayed with me. Oh, and well, I mean, 
It, it's, it, <laughs> they're great. How old are they again? Uh, 10 and 11. Oh fuck yeah, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah, 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 but at least they like can like go to the bathroom themselves. It's not like she handed you a toddler or something that you needed to, I don't That's know, you know, deal with. I had to sorry, do that. Kate. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I had to do that. So I was running really, really late to pick up my kid from nursery, and uh, I'm, I'm, her dad couldn't get her either. Um, he was working like way away, and I. <laughs> I knew that my old team leader, who I hadn't spoken to in months, um, lived just opposite her nursery. Mm -hmm. So I call him up out of the blue and I'm like, oh, hey, mate. Um, how you been? Yeah, I'm good. Could I ask a favor? <laughs> um, and he's like, and he's this kind of like guy who's like, I don't know. I think he's kind of my age, you know, sort of mid thirties, maybe. I know. I think he's a little bit, I think he's all, uh, late thirties actually. Um, and he's, um okay he kind of he'll never listen to this he kind of gives me resistance vibes in notting hill okay all right he's that kind of guy uh but he is a dad so i was kind of like at least he kind of knows the ropes kind of thing mm -hmm. but what i didn't anticipate was that um she uh, for some reason didn't have her coat um, i think it was like yeah because it was like quite a warm day and stuff and i think that she just didn't have a coat and um but she he took her to the local shop got her an ice cream you know was kind of milling about took her to the duck pond and then she said that she was cold so because he lives literally like there he took her back to his flat he called me up he's like do you mind if i take her back to the flat because she's saying she's cold and like you know then you can wait there and then you can i'm like no 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 dude that's fine do what the fuck you want i'm really fucking grateful that you're able to pick her up and um anyway so i find out that she needed a poo <laughs> and so my team leader hadn't spoken to in months not only did i get him to babysit my kid free of charge um but also he had to and he's a dad of he's a dad of a son as well so uh, like it's a kind of a bit of a different thing and he had to um wipe the bum of my then three-year-old um yeah. This is why I'm never having kids. I'm sorry. I just, every story I hear, I'm like, no, let me, it's right. not going to happen. <laughs> let, let me pitch you a couple because I, you know, I have no children of my own, but the, the little girl child that I am now dealing with <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> is That's such a non-parent fucking description. <laughs> it's so damn adorable. So one of the things we had to do after our, our illicit weekend away, we had to go pick him up and, and go on a pretty long road trip with him. I'm just sorry. I'm laughing because it's just like, I, like, guess what me and your mom did this weekend? <laughs> yeah, I, I always thought I was like, yeah, yeah, Just yeah. call me a motherfucker. Motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> guess who's driving her car? Yep. <laughs> in um, all the right ways. Uh-huh. Put like that key in the ignition. Just till you're 50, though. Just, right. I got two more years <laughs> of it, and then I'm done. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Pack up your packs. Sorry, anyway. Sorry what you're saying. Pack. No, but so the little girl child says, uh, <laughs> as, as we're driving home, she's entertaining herself. And uh, apparently her game was, hey, I'm opening up a nail salon and spa. Okay. And my brother, uh, who's in the seat beside her, it like she's basically doing his toes or pretending to. Love it. But she refers to him as Mister Wadowski, <laughs> as though he's he is the last name, right? Right, as though right. he's a customer. Love it. And oh no, I see where this is going. No, oh, I don't no. think you do. This is so funny. Okay. So she okay. said. It's just a random line that came out of her mouth, and it's been making me laugh for days now. She, um, he says, "Oh, I don't think you did a very good job. I, I want to. I want my money back." And she says, "Well, you can just get in the back of the line, Joseph." <laughs> I don't know what it means. It just delighted me to no end. And and and, and as a follow up, we went to dinner last night, and she like a, a little frilly toothpick. She decided was her friend named Gregory. <laughs> uh, she's got ghosts. I, for maybe sure. Maybe so, but it is. I fucking love this kid. She is hilarious. <laughs> I want Ava to be like her. She, she sounds is fucking great. She is so damn funny that, like, periodically, she will something will pop out of her mouth that is the <laughs> funniest thing I will hear all day long. 
And I'm just, it, it, just to Sabrina's point of like, I never want to deal with kids. Not everyone and not all the time, but every now and again, something will happen that's like, I don't know where this came from. I don't know how your brain works. It's probably because part of it is just still unformed pudding that yeah. you were saying things <laughs> like this, but it is a riot. Yeah, that oh, yeah. shit like that is why you have kids. That's the fucking shit right there. Like, Ava can be an absolute dickhead. Like, especially in the morning, she doesn't do shit. She has no respect for me or anyone else, right? <laughs> it's not surprising, I know. But, like, you know, you do kind of, like, hope that your kid will be different. But, no, they're all just as bratty as the other. Yeah. And then every now and then, they'll come up with these fucking nuggets of gold. And you're just like, fuck, I love you. You know, like, <laughs> all of that shit, all of the tantrums, all of the kicking and punching me and whatever else because she doesn't want to wear her favorite fucking dress that apparently she's decided that she doesn't want to wear anymore that day um or whatever you know like all of that shit goes away because they come out with something fucking hilarious or they do something fucking hilarious and you're just like god damn you you and your fucking devil ways of just making me love you all over again yeah see i you lucked know? out having a lot of siblings because right. two of my siblings have kids so i kind of like got out of that and i have a niece and a nephew and they're 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 fun but in small doses mm -hmm. yeah so this is the thing like you can have you can have the good stuff and then give them back and not have to deal with that shit I, yeah. yeah except your your team leader or your old manager or whatever he still had to deal with the bullshit yeah Literally, yeah but yeah. you know <laughs> that's okay but uh but, but no that's that's and that's fine like because it's you know it parenthood isn't for everyone and in fact like i pull no punches when it comes to parenting i love my kids to death but it's the hardest fucking thing on this planet and like i will say to any of my friends who are thinking about having kids like really fucking think about it because especially the women and i don't mean to generalize but it is true like even if you have the most supportive most fucking equal partnership whatever the person who physically gives birth every every single aspect of your life body mindset everything will change everything mm -hmm. will change and it's not all for the better in fact most of it is for the worse <clears throat> you know like your body goes to shit your mood goes to shit your finances go to <laughs> shit your fucking everything goes to shit apart from that you get this cute baby and you get you know some time off work that's pretty good but like um you know and and i'll say like spend some time with me and ava she is a, like on on like a scale of like shitty little brat to fucking angel she's definitely on the higher she's pretty fucking good by comparison to most kids she's still a little fucking shitbag though and like <laughs> I, <laughs> like i, I love that you can be more honest i think a lot of like people that i know who have kids who are around your age they're all being so honest they're like sprina you don't want kids i'm I support that as opposed to where it's commonly been like a lot of people my mom's age would be like oh ho, ho, you'll change your mind and I'm like fuck off Deborah like <laughs> yeah yeah oh, let I me get... make these decisions for me I don't get that with I don't get with like oh you're changing mind because obviously I've had one but what I do get is like when you're gonna have your second I'm like yeah. <laughs> never yeah. <laughs> no mm -hmm. and uh you know and like um people are like oh well you'll feel differently no I fucking won't because if you've seen my fucking bank balance <laughs> oh, I fucking won't. <laughs> um, you know what? In fact, have this one. You fucking love kids so much. Have this fucking one, and I'm gonna go for a fucking spa day. You know, like <laughs> I'm gonna call. I'm gonna get your fucking girlfriend's kid, and she can paint my fucking nails. You know, like. <laughs> uh, but no, like I fucking love being a mom, and I love my kid. But Jesus fucking Christ, I'm honest as shit with that shit. Like I'm too honest. Like I'll tell strangers who are pregnant. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which I have done before, and I. Um, <clears throat> I won't again because actually the fear of fear I saw in her eyes well it was fun but like I'm not gonna lie it was a little bit fun but also I'm not like a really awful person so I won't, won't do that to many other people but I do say to my friends like um you know like come and spend some time if you really are thinking of having kids come and spend some time like come and stay for a couple of days and see the shit in the morning see the shit last thing at night and see oh, whether that's definitely what you want that's how you get babysitters I mean yeah shush Sabrina but <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of the, all my fucking plans. I mean, but the, but that's been kind of the thing, right? Is like with dating, you know, a mother with kids who are of impressionable age. You know, a lot of the a lot of the recent interaction has been like, all right, you need to see the real shit. 
this mm-hmm. is you know this is them blowing up at a restaurant for no good reason mm-hmm. you know this is them do- but it, like there is that stuff but then like i said you know the the girl child will bef- before i leave she makes a point of like oh you're leaving let me let me come give you a big hug oh, and I you're know, just like so oh you fucking siren yeah um, <laughs> it is they fucking the fucking hugs are the worst because everything you're just like god damn i can't be mad at you, you <laughs> know, can i uh... can i tell a story about a kid who hugged me yeah god did you what did you record? well okay so i was at like my cousin's baby shower and they had an older kid like three years old or something and there was other kids at the party and this kid was going around hugging everybody and she came up to me and like went to hug me and i was like i'm not your mom <laughs> Yeah, because one time I hugged somebody I thought was my dad. And when I looked up and it wasn't my dad, I fucking lost it. And I just didn't want that to happen. The kid was like, um, I'm saying goodbye to everyone. And I was like, whoa, OK, sorry. I didn't want you to hug my legs. <laughs> like, I'm just so weird around kids. I just don't really know how to talk to them. It's it's yeah. bad. I don't know how big they get. I don't know what they eat. <laughs> yeah (laughs) yeah yeah but also as well like i'm very much sort of when it comes to like hugging people like i'll kind of sort of try i mean you know it i do try to sort of say like ask because not everyone not everyone likes to be hugged i love cuddles you love cuddles not everyone likes to be cuddles and the same goes the other way as well like sometimes she doesn't want to be hugged like she's never really like she hated being swaddled as a baby she like you know she doesn't like covers on her now she like you know literally like she doesn't like to be closed in um Mm -hmm. she started crying because someone told her as a joke that she was trapped just because she was playing hide and seek under a blanket and he's like oh you're trapped like you know the joke and she started crying i'm Mm. not trapped no you're not ava because look you're fucking you're fine but like she she has a thing so like you know if she if i go to cuddle her because i'm a very tactile person like i love cuddles so if I go to cuddle her and she doesn't want to, like, I'll immediately back off. I don't do any of this. Oh, come on, give me a hug. Like, no, she's fucking mm-hmm. said no. She's fucking indicated she doesn't want it. She didn't fucking have one. She doesn't want it. Um, That's how but... you teach kids consent. I fucking do that with my, my nephew and niece. I'm like, hey, Forrest, you want to give me a hug? He's like, no. I'm like, okay. All yep. right. I won't take offense to that. No, exactly. You don't always want to hug. I mean, I always want to hug, but like, you know. No, I'll hug don't. you. Don't worry. Yeah, It'll be I'll... a big John Carpenter the thing <laughs> hug. Yeah, me and Serena have this thing because we've literally been so far removed for so fucking long. And then when we eventually um, are going to meet up, which hopefully is going to be next year when I come over, um, we're just going to at the airport just have a big like gross, gooey, end up smushing into one form carpenter slash Cronenberg type mess of a hug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it and sounds that's just disturbing gonna... and sexy in equal measure. It's going to be so goth. Nice. <laughs> so goth. <laughs> and that's just going to be the way that we are, and we'll just have to work out a plan because we'll never be able to separate. Yeah. It's just going to have to, we'll, just, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. It's fine. But yeah, like consent is really important. So I sort of try and teach Ava consent in terms of when she goes to hug other people and also always respect her wishes when she doesn't want to be hugged. And, you know, if someone, like if she doesn't want to hug from my, like my mum or something, I'm like, okay, cool. So don't hug her. She doesn't want it. And my mum's pretty cool. Like, she's like, no, of course not. But, you know, like, it's, I don't do that. You know, you do, you have that thing where it's just like, oh, it's just a hug. No, just, no, fuck off. If if she want a hug, she want a hug. I love how far, oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. I was going to say, I love how far removed we got from, like, goth aesthetic, hashtag moist, and now we've just been talking about kids (laughs) for kids. Well, we said it was going to be some wholesome chat, you know. We did, we did. I didn't anticipate it was going to be so much kid talk, but, you know, it's fine. (laughs) Um, Should we get back to the sexy hot goths? Yeah, I was, actually, what I was about to say was, much like the crow. (laughs) They have a badass kid in that, though. She's cool. Yeah, Yeah. she is a cool kid. I I like her buzz cut. Yeah, She's totally a lesbian. Oh, God, um, totally. I watched I this that with. And... I watched this with my lesbian roommate. And she was like, "She is a lesbian," so yeah. can, can confirm. Mm-hmm. Also, as well, because she's not completely like jonesing over Brandon Lee, like in that get up. Like, oh no, she must be gay because although oh, she is still a kid, she's what? I mean, what? Fourteen? Probably, yeah. Like that kind of maybe age? even younger. I was gonna say twelve, thirteen. Yeah. All right, fine. No, maybe. I mean not still... that it's different but enough different. and old enough to have crushes though. sure and she's on clearly, a hot goth musician or Ernie exactly, Hudson. right and she clearly doesn't so i mean ergo gay like, no she definitely had a crush on shelly because shelly oh, is hot yeah. as fuck shelly is hot as fuck 
Shelly has that real 90s hot vibe where it's that pale skin but really dark lipstick and it's kind of isn't really her coloring but somehow they pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like a good dark lipstick. Just in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bo, guess what I bought the other week? Dark that lipstick? I have yet to test out. I bought the purple <laughs> lipstick. Oh, there it's you so go. It's so hot. Yeah. You loved that one, didn't you? I did. It might be my <laughs> phone background. Shut up. No, it's, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Don't fucking tease me like that. Come Maybe on. it will be. Who knows? You could get one of those, what's it, you know, the little things that you can do on the background. We can have like a background, but then you have like a little picture as well. It's like an app you can get for it. I can't remember. Oh. I'll tell you about it. It's good. Okay. <clears throat> so, the movie we are discussing tonight uh, is uh, is full of hot goss and uh, Sophia Sheenus yeah. is, uh, is Shelly there. Yes, uh, who doesn't really look like she did a whole lot. She was in Terminal Velocity and yeah. not much else. But yeah, so she is... Uh, she doesn't say much. Maybe, I'm just saying this, I don't know. But maybe not the best actress. Just very pretty. Which I is mean, possible. Hard yes. to tell. She didn't really get to act. Right. She just kind of got to swan over Brandon Lee, which doesn't really require a lot of acting. No. Uh, <laughs> man, what a... You know, we can just get this conversation out of the way, but what a tragedy. Oh, fuck yeah. I know. And I watched the scene as well, and I just... Because I haven't seen this film since I was probably a teenager, because... <laughs> Of course, I watched this film when I was a teenager. Yeah, of course. And it fueled, I'm not going to lie, fueled so much of who I am now. Um, and, um, but I, I, I didn't really like think about that sort of much. It was one of, I think, it, I don't even know if I knew about it when I first watched it, actually. I think I might have maybe found out later. Um, but I, so I like, I knew like, basic plot points and like there are certain scenes that stuck out in my mind and whatever but like you know little details and so I'm watching the scene um where um oh fuck what's he fucking called uh fun boy Mm -hmm. um you know shoots him Mm -hmm. yeah in the film and shit like the lines like why won't you fucking die and oh I just (sighs) It's it hard. Was, it, was really, it was a really hard scene to watch. It was really hard just because of, like, obviously the script being such a brutal script considering what happened in real life. And, um, yeah, it was a real hard fucking watch. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you can't watch it without thinking of what could have been, mm, you yeah. know, because this is such a great showcase for Brandon Lee. Yeah. That like mm-hmm. this uh, almost undeniably would have led to bigger things. Oh yeah, well it's like kind of like Heath Ledger and Dark Knight. Not that Heath Ledger was like you know at the, the precipice of his career, but you know he'd before then kind of done mostly rom coms or like been the pretty boy and stuff. Whereas like you know obviously the 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 Joker role would have opened so many doors for him in so many other different types of roles and and a different career path. And it kind of reminded me of that just in terms of this, you know, he's like sort of breaking into the mainstream and, you know, and he, as you say, it showcases so much. It shows his physical prowess as well as like his emotional range and his capacity for being basically a badass and, you know, just so much that, especially in the 90s, you looked for in a lead male. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, I mean, tra- death, death is always a tragedy. Unexpected death is even worse. And then, you know, when you add in things like that, it's just, uh, fuck, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But there's an element, too, of that sort of urban legend. It's not quite an urban legend, but it, let me finish the sentence and we'll figure it out. Um, but that element of, like, uh, myth, that's what I mean. Where, right. you know, here is this actor who, the son of Bruce Lee, who mm. is in this movie that is you know a really striking and unusual like nothing looks quite like the crow no and Mm -hmm. and he gives such a physical performance but he's also really emotional and he's this good looking guy and yeah i mean there there's that there's that one scene where you you see him sitting down in profile and you're like you are just whisper thin you were oh i remember that yeah i that stuck out to me as well like it's he, when he's talking he's talking to sarah isn't it yeah 
Is that the grave? Yeah. That Shelley's grave, yeah. And you're like, you you are just, like you're so narrow. Um, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, it, it it is that thing of, like, if if this was, like you said, like Heath Ledger doing the Joker and then passing away, and Brandon Lee just being so striking in this movie, and then all of a sudden he's gone. And mm-hmm. so it just invites not just the specu- the speculation, but a little bit of, like, surety that, oh, he would have been a star after this. Like, we can't know that, but how do you not think that? Yeah. I also kind of think as well, like, obviously, like, I mean, I think this film is is a really good film. Um, I really, especially on my second, like, on my second go around, um, you know, just now, but, like, not just, just now, but recently. Um, like, it just sort of reinforced a lot of the things that I remember feeling at the time. Um, but I also do kind of wonder whether it would have been, I think, because it's quite, it was quite kind of a bit of a, a cult hit, but mm-hmm. like, I wonder if some of, at least, at least some of its success isn't because he died. That's what I was thinking too. It's like, it's hard, you can't ever gauge that because there's no way to see a parallel universe where that didn't happen. Yeah it does feel like one of those films that wouldn't have done super well and then would have become a cult following like later if Brandon Lee had, you know, not, not died on set. Mm. Um, But it's, it does feel like it has that almost like a, it's got a shadow hanging over it in a way that almost, almost suits the, the theme of the, of the film, which makes it even like darker. Yeah. It's all very apt. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I just feel like with this film, like, I mean, it, you know, it has this real kind of, I feel like this film was kind of ahead of its time, you know, because you think, you you know, you flash forward 10, 15 years, you've got films like, you know, you've got all of the the revamping of Batman, where Batman is really dark, you know, it's not just like a guy in tights, it's, you know, you've got all that Gotham excess, uh, ex- uh, aesthetic, you've got things like Sin City, um, you know, you've got these really dark you know, you've got Blade and stuff as well. Like, you've got these really dark comic book adaptations that aren't just sort of lots of bright colours and, like, pow and bam and whatever. And they really kind of go into this real darker, much darker territory. And I feel like this is one of the first ones to do that. And I feel like it was really ahead of its time. So, you know, I think even if you took away Brandon Lee's death, if you had released it maybe a little bit later on, I feel like it would have been it would have been successful but I feel like maybe at the time, even though it's, it is very of its time, especially with that soundtrack, mm-hmm. um, I feel like, you know, it might not have done so well just simply because this is not the superhero. Or this is not the comic book movie that people were kind of used to back then. You know, we had all the kind of, well, I'm, I'm saying that actually, we did have like Batman Returns one at the same time, which is pretty gothic. Yeah. Oh yeah, talk about goth aesthetic. I know we've mentioned her before, but Michelle Pfeiffer. Fuck, is Catwoman, Fucking fuck. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she shaped my sexuality for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, for she's sure. definitely an influence. <laughs> definitely an influence. Um, but yeah, like I suppose you do have that. But you know, but, but even then, I don't think I might be wrong. Bo, you were <clears throat> older than five when that came out. Mm-hmm. Was Batman Returns a hit, or was that one of no. those ones that kind of? No, it was right. considered a big disappointment. Yeah. But now everyone's like, aside from maybe the more recent ones, like this is one of the best Batmans. But mm-hmm. I think, again, because it was kind of like, maybe it's a bit ahead of its time, like people weren't sort of ready for that real kind of like nihilistic, vampy, goth kind of take on stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas now the world, whole world's going to shit. So, you know, <laughs> we're kind of ready for it. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? Like, I, and I, but I feel like that, that some of its success of the, of the crow for back then was because of this kind of like whispered, hushed kind of, um, what's the word, sort of, not sacredness but like it like uh like a kind of reverence yeah because yeah. of his death well the whole movie is kind of like this weird eulogy mm. to brandon lee you know um mm-hmm. because you know as sabrina was pointing out like there's so many moments in this movie where people are talking about death or dying or coming back from the dead or whatever and mm. it's like you just can't separate that in your mind of like oh i'm wa-, like th- these characters are saying something that is right next door to true yeah. because of what happened with this film. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's a real bummer, but also um, it does make it, you know, I think it, uh, Alex Proyas, the director, I think said, 
you know, he, he would do everything he could do to stop a remake, which one is coming, but... Um, is that? Yeah. No. Yeah, Bill Sarsgaard? I hope it flops. <laughs> I, really, I hope it oh, okay, gets cancelled. <laughs> yeah, but I'm... Mm, Bill Skarsgård, though. Yeah, but let him do more original roles. We don't need a remake. We don't need a remake. We don't. Yeah, it I'm, wouldn't be the same. I mean, this this film is essentially chaos, like start to finish. This whole film, <laughs> like, is there really a plot? Like, no. there's kind of a thread, but it's it's all over the place. Um, I just feel like you couldn't redo that. Plot. Like this plot is very kind of um, very kind of paint by numbers revenge. Oh yeah, murder like, all rapists uh, is what I got yeah. out of it. <laughs> yeah, and I it's not something I I disagree with necessarily, but like. Um, I know I'm pissing people off by saying that, but um, <laughs> uh, but like at least all right within film, um, but like you know I, it's not yeah I like I just don't really feel like part of what, the the beauty of this film is this, is its look is its vibe, the soundtrack is very of its time. So although I'm saying it's ahead of its time, it kind of needs to be made in the nineties. If that yes. makes sense, mm-hmm. um, but appreciated now. I think the way that I think the way that it's happened, obviously, Brandon Lee's death notwithstanding, I, I don't wish that, of course. But like the way that it was made at that time and caught fire with the fans later on, that, later on down the line, makes perfect sense and is and is perfect for that film. Now I don't, you don't need it. You, you, there's nothing you can really expand upon because the plot doesn't really allow for it because the plot is very basic. Um, and all the stuff that you love about this film, it's not the plot, it's everything else that comes with it. And it's like, well, you can't really expand on that. They, you, can't, you can't get more The Crow than The Crow. <laughs> right. They tried. <laughs> they tried with so many terrible sequels. And I'm sorry, David Boreanaz, yes, even your one. Much as I love you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the sequels are fucking terrible. Because you can't fucking redo The Fucking Crow. But I also do love Bill Skarsgård, so, you know, I'll wait and see. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, all right. Well, like you said, there's not really a, a plot to this movie. So we'll just kind of bounce around a little bit here. But okay. so, so the the whole the whole premise of the movie, if you haven't seen The Crow, and God, God knows if you're listening to this, how, how could you have escaped it? Um, <laughs> but it is... Uh, the story of Eric Draven and his uh, fiance Shelley, and they are about to get married. It's Devil's Night, the night before Halloween. Yeah, they never call it Halloween, do they? It's always Devil's Night. Yeah, yeah, because it's the night before. I thought. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was actually talking to um, the guy I'm seeing, and he was like, "Oh, my favorite night is Devil's Night," and I was like, "You know about Devil's Night?" Because like. I've never heard that term Wait, before. He knows about Devil's Night? Oh, he's gone well, up in my estimations. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, he's like, oh, do you guys call it that here? And I was like, well, not anybody I know other than people who are kind of goth. <laughs> nice. He's so not goth, though. No, but he's got some tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, I know, but like, <laughs> I mean, the guy's white bread as you like looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Such a anyways, um, but yeah, okay. No, it just it just surprises me because you know he's it, he just doesn't seem the kind of guy that would know about that. But I mean, where's he from? Is is uh, fuck? Where's he from? Serbia. That's right. Okay, yeah, maybe. Oh, he's probably in the mob then. Well, he left when he was five, so I don't. Yeah, think so. He was <laughs> the in... country, not the mob. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Right. Both. That's why it's... they had to leave. Right, he's <laughs> running, like, running from the mob. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, this is how they'll find him is through this podcast. <laughs> oh, no. It's a real Sorry, Easter no. Promises thing about that. No? <laughs> yeah. Um, Shit. <laughs> somebody's naked fighting in a bathhouse. I was literally going to say that. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> me, um, and him, me and him are due a naked fight. That's that's going to happen. Sure. <laughs> wait. Whoa. Wait. Hold up. <laughs> Never mind. We'll talk Never about mind. it after. We'll talk about this post the recording. <laughs> so, so yeah, they're uh, they're getting married the next day on Halloween, which leads to one of my favorite lines of the movie. Uh, I love Ernie Hudson in this movie uh, quite a lot. I think he's wonderful in this. And it's when they first investigate the crime scene because uh, you know a bunch of 
punks bust in, you know, uh, what is it? Tin Tin, Fun Boy, T Bird, uh, uh, Skank. Skank. Skank, yeah. Uh, Love the names. So yeah. 90s. So nice. T Bird. What? <laughs> uh, we'll get to him. Oh my God. He's so great in this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they bust in. Shelly, because it's a 90s movie, she is raped, not just killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. Uh, but it's Eric- just not a murder without rape. <laughs> Man. Did you even murder her if you didn't rape her first? Come on, guys. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, but yeah, and and so when Brandon Lee as Eric busts in, uh, they end up stabbing him, holding him up to the window, shooting him a couple of times, and tossing him out. Yeah, and a and good yeah. So uh, Shelley is taken to the hospital, but she dies thirty hours later. We learn. Mm-hmm. and but one of my favorite moments what i was getting at is when they're investigating this crime scene ernie hudson is is the detective and they find the wedding dress and the in, uh the invitations and so forth and somebody says who gets married on halloween and he looks at shelly bleeding unconscious on the floor and says nobody does and you're like yeah. oh man that's cold <laughs> that is so cold. that is dark <laughs> that's cop humor though isn't it that's fucking uh what's that type of humor fucking gallows humor. yeah gallows humor, gallows humor yeah gallows humor. <laughs> yeah um it's my favorite kind <laughs> yeah and and so uh there's also the the young girl sarah uh who says that she is not related to them they just take care of her because it turns out her mom's a real piece of shit yeah mm-hmm and then there's that whole thing where, because, like, uh, Shelly, who's kind of in and out of consciousness, she's like, oh, Eric. And then, um, you know, Ernie Hudson says, like, oh, no, no, don't worry about him. He's, he's all good. Like, it's fine. And then he says kind of the same sort of reassurance to Sarah about Shelly. Like, oh, no, she's going to be fine. And she's, like, real fucking savvy because she's street smart, smart as fuck. And she's oh, yeah. like, you, you know, you lied to her and you're lying to me. Like, mm-hmm don't do that kind of thing yeah she doesn't beat around the bush at all not with her mom not with like the cops like she's yeah she's a kid that i could see myself hanging out with like i get why she hung out with shelly and eric yeah because she's not a kid she's a fucking grown up in a kid's body like she's because she's had to be yeah yeah um and it's really fucking sad especially when you kind of like you're skipping ahead way ahead but like you know her mom does try at one point and it's just like (sighs) you know like too little too late love like and, but was um, it there was definitely an olive branch mm-hmm. there is an olive branch there is an olive branch but like it's just what i'm sorry what i mean is like the the, the damage is kind of done with oh, her yeah. like you know like she's not going to be a little girl she's not going to be your average 13 year old you know who just like runs around with her friends and whatever mm-hmm. you know like she's a grown-up and it's mm-hmm. been forced on her and like that's kind of your fault mum you know like you didn't protect her and um yeah and it's it's just kind of like so you know it's just it's kind of that sort of double-edged coin like yeah she's fucking awesome and she's cool and like you know we really like her as a character but you know she's like that for all the wrong reasons Mm -hmm. you know yeah it's just sad sad to me mother is the name of god on the lips and hearts of children yeah god how angsty is that (laughs) oh i know it's it's so good though like it's, it's such a so good, good angsty line yeah it just it reminds me of they kind of they try and do that in silent hill don't they like, the, the movie yeah it's oh it's been so long since i've watched silent they, they hill, basically the like mother is mother is god in the eyes of a child mm. like mm. um i wonder yeah. if there's like an origin quote like if that is derived from something else it sounds, yeah. that'd be a fun rabbit hole to get into go ahead um all right <laughs> so uh this is actually uh, a william makepeace thackeray line oh so uh mother is the name for god in the lips and hearts of little children oh uh is is a uh, a line from that gentleman so um well i as a mother i'd like to say damn right don't you fucking forget it (laughs) yeah apparently it comes from the book vanity fair oh Oh. really yeah and also a line for vanity fair uh, vanity fair uh which also applies here uh from william makepeace thackeray uh revenge may be wicked but it's natural 
Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to read tattoo. Vanity Fair. Immediately want that as a tattoo. It has absolutely <laughs> nothing. No, there's no nothing in my life ever because I'm honestly, I'm just too lazy and don't care for revenge. Like, I just don't care. Like, I'm not that bothered about anything. But that would make a badass tattoo. It would. Yeah. It would. Sabrina, get it for me. <laughs> well, I haven't read Vanity Fair. Do you know how I feel about having to re- read books before seeing okay, the film fine, and, and getting fine. a tattoo? <laughs> fine. Read the book, then get the tattoo for me. All right. Okay. Is that better? Okay, good. Cool. Okay. I'm glad okay. we're in agreement. Do you guys feel like this film covers a different, like, a bunch of angles of love? Like, there's paternal love, there's, mm-hmm. um, like, found family kind of love, and then we get a little bit of incest, which I don't understand why they put it in there. Just to make it especially creepy. This okay. Is, yeah, yeah, I think this is the love actually of goth movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because none of the stories really like need to weave together, but they weave them together nonetheless. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Got Very it. Tenuously. Um, yeah. Goth actually. So... Goth actually. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. If we good. did episode names, could we call that our episode <laughs> name? We don't really yeah. do episode names, do we? But it could be the uh, the unofficial official one. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Goth actually. Um, <laughs> hashtag goth actually. Fuck yeah. I'm into that. So, but all right. So after all of the horrible business goes down, a year later, um, Ernie Hudson has been busted down because apparently he's, you know, not playing nice with corrupt cops or something. That That's a thread that he's is a little. sticking his nose in, isn't he? Yeah, that that doesn't seem totally baked. That that story of why he's no longer a detective, um, but this beef with his like detective replacement, right? And that apparently has led to him in the midst of getting a divorce with his yeah. younger hot wife. Um, yeah, and and so at on this day uh, on Devil's Night a year later. Um, a crow goes to the grave of Eric Draven and starts tap, tap, tapping on it. Mm-hmm. And out comes uh, Brandon Lee, now returned to life to take vengeance on uh, the the people who murdered him and his would-be wife. And yeah, yeah. And, and now we're off to the races. Like, the rest of the movie is just that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just death after death. A little bit of dialogue, death, death, death. Yeah, death, it really death. doesn't Explosion, like death, death, death. It doesn't waste time. That's what I like about this film. Is like, yeah, it's chaos, but it doesn't. There's, there's no boring parts in this film. No, no, and even like the more conversational bits, they're really they're either emotionally driven or there's like a funny quip or you mm-hmm. know what I mean. Like there's, it's an hour forty minute movie, but every I would say every single one of those minutes is worth it. You know, mm-hmm. like it might not necessarily like be the most cohesive movie, but um, but yeah, like it's you're not gonna you don't want to you don't want to go for a bathroom break without pausing it. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. only the only time in the movie because I thought the same thing as I was watching it, I was like, man, I am really engaged with this movie that I've seen a million times. <laughs> And I still really, it, it's been a while and I really love watching it. And I think it's the, the car chase with the police and, and T-Bird is the only time in the movie I'm like, ah, okay, fine. I'm just not crazy about car chases. But you get oh. that great line from Annie Hudson where it's just like, so many cops around, there must be a donut sale. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that, good. That was really good. <laughs> it's such a cheap, faraway diss, but it's so good. I think it's just because Ernie Hudson says it and I love him. <laughs> Like anything he says, I'm like, ah, that guy. <laughs> uh, that was good. Yeah. So the first up is uh, Ten Ten to to get the oh oh we all right first let me take a step Dumbest back. Name. Let's let's talk about uh, well, tell that to the French. Um, I don't give a fuck. Like I love Ten Ten the comic, but that's a fucking dumbass name for a gangster. So. so... <laughs> All right, but first, uh, Brandon Lee has to go back to the apartment where he relives the tragic events of of the night uh, where he and and Shelley are killed. I'll tell you what, this movie can do a flashback and a half, huh? Oh, 
Can we talk about the sex flashback? Because yeah. I'm like stuttering right now, but that did things to me. And this film, they do such a good job of showing their love without actually giving us anything. Like it gives us tiny little flashbacks, maybe 10 minutes of the film. But it's I that. feel their affection and their love for each other. Yeah. And that's coming from a cynic. <laughs> he does this curl around her body. Yes. Oh, Do you know the one so, I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where Everyone it's like the one you're talking about, but I'm yeah. fanning myself right now. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> where you're like, well done. No wonder you're willowy, Brandon Lee. You were <laughs> like the the uh like he he was probably a little uh early for this. But imagine if you heard, like, say, a 40-year-old Brandon Lee talking about tantric sex. Oh, fuck. And you'd be like, oh, I know you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, Bo, why'd you have to go there? Because... Can we all just take a minute to process that? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's like the, the Feruza Balk minute. We'll do the Brandon yep. Lee tantric sex moment. <laughs> What's great is I have a naked man in the other room like asleep so mm-hmm. like i'm just kind of like uh-huh this is a this is nope this is a recording i'm staying for no i'm staying here i'm staying right here <laughs> uh, or just go back in there with some fresh ideas you know right <laughs> <laughs> does he have like a leather outfit no but i'm gonna mm-hmm. arrange it or that, okay good just so uh what is it that like nylon shirt that he has that's all tattered and wrapped up with duct tape i could definitely do that Uh, i could yeah Mm -hmm. you know who borrowed that outfit later who uh the winter soldier oh Oh, wow yeah talk about hot goth aesthetic talk about hot goth aesthetic oh my god (laughs) love a man in leather leather. (laughs) but that's what i was gonna get to is when he goes back to the apartment after the flashback and he's like now let me put on this cool makeup and mm-hmm. get into my goth ass outfit. And by the way, how about we throw on some cure for good measure? Oh my god, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Like could it be anyone else? Has you got be. the cure and you got nine inch nails. nails. And I'm pretty I... sure the nine inch nails is a cover of Joy Division and you just you really can't get more goth than that trio. You just cannot you cannot. Like as soon as Nine Inch Nails came on, I was like, I'm so glad I'm recording this with Sabrina. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> the one of the bands playing uh that we see at the club is My Life with Thrill Kill Cult. You know? Nice. It, yeah, I, yeah. It it's just not uh, th- one of the all time great soundtracks. Mm-hmm. It's so. Fun. I was literally have like. Did you see that conversation? I don't know. I can't remember which fucking group it was on. That I posted in. Um, I bet actually no. I think it was. Uh, I think it was my other show's post. But there was a whole kind of thread on my post talking about the soundtrack between me and uh, we've got a new listener called Doge, and then we've got uh, and then uh, 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 like a longtime friend of mine, Kev, and we were all talking about the soundtrack and like how fucking boss it was, and um, you know talking about like the score as well. Um, mm-hmm. And how fucking dramatic and cool and like, again, very goth, you know, just that very kind of over the top kind of singing choir type. Mm-hmm. I think cool, that really cool. It just this whole film, like, like I mean, on the topic of soulmates, like I don't believe in soulmates, but this film makes me believe it in this instance. Just yeah, I, I don't know. It's like, oh my god, they... I there's Pantera in this and everything. <laughs> Like, I feel like with goths, they're like, oh, the world turns its back on me and whatnot. So they find soulmates in each other. And that's mm-hmm. what I got from Shelley and um, Eric is that like they were so different from everyone else. So they they were kind of tethered that way. Whereas exactly. me, my exactly. pessimistic, realistic ass just doesn't believe in any of that. But when I watch this film, I'm like, yes, I want him to avenge her death and then he can sort of rest peacefully which is just it's just so goth it's it's like disgusting yeah it's so good though yeah and i i I think like i mean i don't believe like in soulmates per se i think that there are people who like oh you will last forever Mm -hmm. you know like or you know i mean at least next 60 years or so but like uh like you know one of my best friends maddie and her husband murray I I can't imagine those two ever being apart. Just can't do it, you know. Um, and that's cool. That's not to say though that there were that they're soulmates. That just means that they're a very good fucking match. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make that connection any less. 
you know like you can put whatever name you want you can say like you could t- you could turn around and say they're soulmates and i could be like sure yeah i'll buy that but equally like doesn't mean to say though that there's not someone else that either of them could get with that aren't just as much or more you know um suited um but just like and so for me like the whole soulmate thing like not necessarily but i do believe though that you couldn't find someone who gets you on a level and you get each other on a level that you can make it last long term but just i don't feel like that's necessarily for everyone or that everyone finds that um, but it doesn't mean to say either as well that that person's life is any less happy or fulfilling. Well, it's but interesting like, that you say that. And it's interesting that this is our topic based on, like, I was with somebody for almost 11 years. And mm. it was very much everyone thought we'd be together forever. That was obviously the goal. We had just moved in together, like, into a house we built. And boom, I just left. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like me. So, I just got out of an eight-year relationship. We were uh-huh. engaged. We we'd had well, we we had sold our house with the intention to buy again. We've got a kid together. You know, we were engaged. All that, like the whole, we'd booked our wedding and everything, and then it was kind of like, bye. <laughs> yeah, we went through the same thing we at the same time. Similar. It was very strange. Did I mention how we're the same people? Like we're yeah. the same person. Um, you know, and so we kind of went through that journey, and then, but it's like, um, it's kind of it's funny because like our kind of perceptions on things it's almost I don't know about you Sabrina but I kind of feel with things like sort of like a veil's been kind of removed and I've been able to sort of like I think it's just because I've been learning about myself a lot recently and I've actually just sort of come to realize like who I am and what I am and what my capabilities are and what my limits are and um and I've been the kind of person that's always dreamed about just finding the one and having a dream wedding and having this very Martha Stewart lifestyle, which when you actually meet me is fucking laughable that I've kind of held on to that belief for so long because that is so far from who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And like, I've like kind of, it's almost like I've caught up with myself. Like everyone else is kind of like, like when I said to people that I was breaking up with my ex, they were like, duh, well (laughs) fucking done. Are you like I'm so glad you're there because we've known this for a while like you know like it was literally the reaction of pretty much everyone was just kind of like yeah Kate fucking nice one caught up now kind of thing and I'm like all right fucking hell you know um so but it's kind of like you know you could realize that about yourself and yeah you know and and what and what love and what relationships and things mean to you but with regards to like you know bring it back to the film with like eric and shelley and things that's not to fucking piss all over what they have because as you say i feel like given the right circumstances and the right type of people you can have a forever love like my friend maddie and murray they are a forever love like i have absolutely no doubt about that no one fucking iota of a doubt um you know and and i genuinely watching this film i believe that these two have this insanely deep connection and yeah the whole kind of goth thing of like revenging her death and then he can finally rest is just ah oh, love it we all mentioned at the beginning that we don't believe in soulmates but i want to know why Bo, why you don't uh i just think that it's not a one-to-one kind of affair like i do think that you can have someone that you have this like really deep meaningful like a whole body connection with um but i just don't think it's one person i like it that just seems a little too mystical to me or something yeah and i think Mm. that it's much more about your experiences and your belief and your value system and what you what you want out of a relationship like those are the ingredients to a soulmate not you know like oh i was touched by cupid when i was born you know (laughs) It's it's yeah. it's not that it it's like finding the right person for you is about finding the right person for you and not you know discovering them with you know a pickaxe and a compass yeah um, or like matching your star signs or yeah that kind of yeah. stuff like you know although uh, I do love doing that not gonna lie and apparently me and Sabrina are very compatible I'm just saying just putting I mean I, I think. <laughs> I think that this whole show is all about that. Like goth actually is, <laughs> is just the story of that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know that I think like I'm, I'm very romantic by nature. 
Uh, you are a softie. Yeah. Uh, like, I, you... I like romance, yeah. Yeah, weren't you quoting Shakespeare in the last episode? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, like, I love Shakespeare. I love the you're, romantic poets, yeah. You're a softie with a dash of cynicism, and honestly, I think that's the best way to be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I balk a little at cynical. I think that I'm a bit of a realist. Like, I understand that, you know, ro- as wonderful as romantic ideals are, there also has to be that level-headedness of like, well, yeah, but y- you got to get in the trenches and make the relationship work, too. And Yeah. You know, and also, I just think being realistic about it, like, you know, I've been in relationships before um, <laughs> where... Anytime we did a big decision together, we would talk about what happens when we break up. Like, mm-hmm. if we break up. Um, that is realistic as fuck. Wow. Yeah, that's a little dour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, I dig it. But it, was, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, God. It was just kind of like, look, you know, let's be honest. Like, it might happen. Turns out it did. Um, and it's not even my re- most recent ex. It's my ex beforehand. Um, and it was kind of like, okay, cool. So who gets the TV? You know? <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it was nice to know like because it was kind of like okay cool well we have that plan so like you know when it came to breaking up the actual breakup was fairly straightforward in that respect because it was kind of like we'd already we'd already discussed it fucker got all the he got all my x files have either of you ever said like oh i'll love you forever yeah to someone (gasps) you have yeah i say it all the time oh my god yeah i know i do it all the time i know I refuse to say it. I'm too much of a realist. Fuck it's, it's... you. You've said it to me. You're different. I've told okay. you you're different. Yeah, well, obviously. Plot- no, like, <laughs> the... <laughs> yeah, no, I say it all the time in relationships. It's such bullshit. I'm sorry. Like, in fact, actually, uh, he won't listen. It's fine. So basically, like, with my ex, my ex has had been having a real hard time with our breakup. I'm not going to lie. Um, and uh, he recently, oh, God, he keeps doing the... He keeps asking me questions and I'm like, I don't know what you want me to say because you're not going to like the answer. And like one of the things he said most recently was just like, you know, when did this happen? When did your when did you change your mind about stuff? Because, you know, you said it was going on for ages, but you gave me a Christmas card where you said this. And I'm like, mm. yeah, I know. But what was I going to say? Like, that's Christmas. Hey, card I don't really talk. like you anymore. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's Christmas card pillow talk. Like the fuck am I? Because we always write stupidly long messages. Oh my god! Like you're my world and blah 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 blah. And like, um, you know. Excuse so me write... while I vomit. Yeah. All right. Fuck you. So like, I I you know write this shit and like I'm you know. And I even said I was like, you know what? Maybe I was going through a day where I really did love you. Like you know, I went through ups and downs a lot of the times. Why I didn't break up with you two years ago and I broke up with you now because it took me that long to fucking make my mind up. But like you know, like maybe that day I was having a good day. You know, it might have not been a lie in that moment. Turns out it was a lie now, but maybe not in that moment. You know, and he, he did not like that answer. Well, you can't pick like you can't split hairs when right. it comes to a breakup. You know, they're messy. <laughs> it is, and I'm just like, just don't focus on the fucking detail. Just right, and also don't ask that shit. Like that's yeah, that's stuff you don't it's... need to know. Like the, yes, the person you are with no longer feels the same way that you do about them you know that that is the information you need not well when did it happen and and why like unless unless it's like i'm leaving you because you're you know a a a serial killer or 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 a chronic abuser or you're an alcoholic like those those would be obvious reasons but -hmm. sometimes it's just because people grow apart and the things that they want out of life change and all of that stuff and exactly and And i've literally explained this to him and i've said like look you know since becoming a mother i've reevaluated some shit and reprioritized some shit and you know and whatever and like i'm sorry this is where i'm at and like as harsh as it is you have to fucking deal with it and like it's this whole kind of thing of like just don't ask me fucking questions because a you're not gonna like the answer and b what's the fucking point like it is what it is and like you asking questions isn't going to do anything really particularly in fact it's probably just going to make you worse so like just mm, stop it and because also as well it fucking rips me up because i feel fucking like i don't feel bad because i know it's the right thing but like i also just you know i'd still care for the guy like he's not a dickhead i'm a bit of a dickhead but like he's not like a complete asshole so i'm like you know don't make me tell you shit that's going to upset you. Yeah. And I don't want to mm. know. Like, I don't I don't want to hear that list of all the things that you think are wrong with me. You yeah. Know? Like, I, I mean, I could definitely give it, you know. I could yeah, it's just adding it, but... salt to the wound. And it's like, just let the breakup be the breakup. You don't need to 
dive into it because then you're just going to need more therapy. Yeah, right. Right. He's yeah. already in therapy. And you know how like... much you know how much that costs. It's so expensive. Ton. So expensive. Yeah. And yeah. that's coming from three different countries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns out it doesn't matter how good your fucking healthcare plan is. <laughs> that shit is expensive wherever you live. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and it takes yeah. so long. It took, it took years. I, I, I always joke it took hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars of therapy to get me to be a decent human being. And I feel and, like it'll take that much just to get me to be okay. Yeah. Like just an okay person. <laughs> right. But it, uh, you know... But, barely but, functional <laughs> but to that point Woo-hoo. of like i don't need i don't need you know because it wasn't you know forever ago that i had a breakup that really blindsided me yeah but i also wasn't like why i was like all right if that's how you feel about this i am not you know i'm not so i'm not so brittle that i'm gonna fall apart about this and also if i i'm not gonna try to change your mind like clearly you have thought about this clearly she had thought about more than i realized at first but whatever (laughs) you know at the same time it's like well all right well this didn't work out let's go see what else is out there and 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. and you're probably happier for it now oh the relationship i'm in now is is wonderful uh I, i absolutely adore it so yeah, maybe one day the uh, the girl child will paint your toenails you never know <laughs> we'll see how it goes i'm not against it uh um, i i want to see the photos when that happens she, and i want you to have some really outlandish color like fuchsia she's, and she's gonna call you mr ransdell isn't she yeah <laughs> I, I i'm trying to uh i'm trying to get her to uh just to call me Bo. um but what does she call you it the so she'll call me like mom's friend <laughs> and i'm like i'm right here like and she's not like you're alone with me you don't have to refer to me as your mother's who by the way is not in the building uh, her friend so she go hey mom's friend can i have some milk yeah <laughs> But, that is so that's like mad max when they call him blood bag throughout the entire film yeah, yeah it's but but it's also it's one of those <laughs> it also one of those things that's super charming it's and, cute. it's so cute yeah because she knows like oh i like she's doing it on purpose of course yeah um but uh but yeah but that's you know does she say it like this oh yeah mom's friend <laughs> no no the the boy child is a little more like savvy he yeah like he's not crazy about her dating yeah i bet he doesn't need the image of him his mom getting pulled i he's he's not that much i don't i don't know if he's gone that far with it but i think it's more that he's not the center of attention the way that perhaps he might have been Uh, and uh so weirdly so here's something i'll let you guys try to parse this one out because i haven't figured this one out yet okay uh so there was uh, i was helping her uh get ready to move and so Mm -hmm. i was helping like disassemble some stuff in her house you know taking down like this movie screen that she has and stuff like that and uh i offhandedly said like oh i need a screwdriver that's gonna reach and she brought the screwdriver from her garage and when she did i said oh thanks baby and because you know i'm affectionate like that and he was like no 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 you can't say that (laughs) the kid said this yeah and I was like, what do you mean? And he says, well, it's okay if you date, but people who say baby and kiss a lot, that means mm. they're married, and I don't want you two to be married. I think that's just like a youthful understanding of the, you know, yeah. quote unquote, nuclear family. That's kind of yeah. what they, they think at that age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't look too deep into that. Okay. It's very interesting, though, because... Now to torture him, she'll make a point of kissing me in front of him. <laughs> oh, uh, that's mean. Where? Yeah, she'll, she'll be like, she'll because he'll get upset. And she'll she'll tell him like, you know, you can't decide who I kiss. And he's like, well, just don't do it in front of me. He's like, well, then I turn like, around. I feel like that's fair. If he doesn't yeah. want you to kiss in front of him, like I feel like that's fair as a kid. But he also is trying to insert himself 
uh, in the yeah, kiss? It, it, not in the kiss, but he'll like try to come between us. <laughs> oh like... yeah, but that's that's just. Do you know? I used to do that with my actual fucking parents. Yeah. I used to hate it when they kiss. And I would like get in the middle and try and push them apart. And of course, that all that would do is encourage them to do it more. Sure. Because I was an idiot child and didn't understand that. And like, yeah, just stupid dumb shit. Like, it's really dumb. Like, it's just a kid thing. They'll get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, in fact, it's... probably like in, I don't know, however many years' time, he'll probably be going like, totally as an anecdote. Oh, like, do you remember when like, I don't know, either that guy you used to date or hey, do you remember when like you and Bo like would do this and I'd say this? Ha 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 ha. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but it, he'll be fine. It's it's a real mild problem, especially when girl child is totally on board. What you uh what you have to do next is just like slap her ass in front of him, see what happens. Nah, I don't know. I like I'm real tentative about all that stuff because I'm like I don't wanna I don't wanna scar this child. Or and maybe I, just like I'm, squeeze her bum a little bit playfully. Maybe slap in the ass is too much. Or maybe just like a playful squeeze. Like put your arm around her, around her waist. Just do a little. You it, know, do you th- do you think it would cross? Would it cross the line if I spanked her and made her count it out loud? <gasps> <laughs> no, that is absolutely the line that you need to to reach. <laughs> okay. Bo, you have to give me warning when you say shit like that. Fuck. Oh, you're getting Kate hot and bothered. No. Yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's the, that's the car it. conversation let me tell you about what we did while you kids were elsewhere you stop it um, <laughs> kate do you need a minute um yeah i'm gonna put you on me no i'm joking i'm fine i'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> all right so back to the movie for a second we'll, we'll yeah sorry we went we got we keep going way off track that's the Apologies whole thing listeners who like came we're following the, the same plot as the film yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In fairness, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> so there's uh, so Tintin goes to a pawn shop, which is uh, owned by Joe Polito, I think is the actor's name, who I know best as the guy from Miller's Crossing that, that. smacked his fat son. And when his kids start, what? yeah, have, have you never <laughs> seen this? No. His son comes, and he's got a, little, a chubby little kid in that movie, and he's, he plays a mob boss. And the kid comes home, and um, while he's having a conversation with another mobster, and because it's a Coen Brothers movie, he's asking the kid about hot dogs or something. Okay. And the kid pop, pops off about it, and Joe Polito just smacks his fat kid. On the face. Yeah, right in the face. And the kid starts crying, and he says, Oh, did somebody smack you? And oh, oh, that's so mean. It's right. It's a real grease ball thing to say to somebody, and uh, and he is that character in this movie, only with more profanity. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know. Is, yeah, okay. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> Tintin is is selling off like rings and purses and stuff, and Joe Polito has to be like, "Hey, uh, is this a blood on this?" Hey, come on, man. You need to clean this off before you bring it in here. And, and so the the vibe is, oh, Tintin is just a low-level street thug who is going around stabbing and or robbing from people and pawning their stuff. And uh, also, I really like the fact that you get, without anyone saying it in the movie, you do get the understanding that, like, oh the that brandon lee can see through the eyes of the crow Mm -hmm. yeah oh do you know what that gave me such vibes of your latest novel sabrina oh yeah i didn't even pick up on that (laughs) really you didn't pick up on your own fucking work i'm a mess right now kate (laughs) right now in life no, I'm joking. Wow. <laughs> I'm, wow. only jo- I'm only joking. <laughs> We're gonna have a conversation later. Yeah, Please, thanks. can we? Um, I'm gonna make you count your. Uh... <laughs> I'm not even gonna finish that sentence because I just forgotten about it, and now I'm all flustered <laughs> again. Stop. Um. Um. um... <laughs> Wait, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah. No. It. Uh, so in one of Sabrina's work, she has like a similar kind of thing going on. It just reminded me of that. Um, everyone go check out Sabrina's books. Um, 
yeah um it, it's a very cool thing and as you say yeah Bo, it's very kind of like it's subtle in the way that it's done it's not like you know it doesn't patronize its audience and it's it's very well done i think yeah there there's yeah. A, a lot of like show don't tell stuff in this movie that i really mm-hmm. like yeah um well and like sabrina was saying of like you understand the relationship that eric and shelly have without anyone being like oh you two really loved each other you know <laughs> yeah hey guys you see this couple like you know they're, they're the fucking shit oh no thanks thanks for telling me that so the uh eric finds Tintin in an alley and uh they end up duking it out with knives and whatnot and you know eric kills him by stabbing him as as it's later recounted in every major organ alphabetically yes so fucking cool it's so extra like it's not just enough to stab him but as he every organ in a, and also as well like you can just imagine the uh the, the coroner just kind of like going hang on a fucking minute wait that was done at like two hours ago I want to know, like, this This seems like a very good corona, because I can't imagine that, like, he... Wrote, I thought like, that was actually just, like, an exaggeration. Mm-hmm. I think I didn't, th- I didn't yeah. take it as fact. I really? I took it as fact. Yeah. I took it as fact. It's, stupid. it's very yeah. goth, though, to do yeah. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and- amazed that he didn't do it by phases of the moon or some shit, you know? Because <laughs> he, he's a, a werecrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but so he goes to the pawn shop after that, and uh, in one of the creepier scenes of the film is him just showing up outside the door mm-hmm. of the pawn shop and like opening and kind of rapping on the window as he says. Uh, uh, he does the Raven quote, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, tap 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 it and rap rap rapping on knocking on my chamber door. Yeah. And yeah. so he ends up busting in and goes to find the engagement ring that mm-hmm. Tintin later pawned to this guy Gideon. And um, and I really, uh, another moment I really like is just him sitting cross-legged going through the rings. and But his eyes are closed and it's just like, oh, he'll know it when he feels it. Mm-hmm. And, it's, again, so goth. It's yeah, just like, right? My heart is tethered to this, you know, like... Uh, and he I gives a great, it. like, visceral reaction when he touches it. it like, this, you know, physical assault of, of these memories hitting him. Of Speaking of goth, of him putting a bunch of candles up in a flammable as hell attic. Oh my god, I know, right? Okay, <laughs> as somebody who does not want to get married, if somebody proposed to me up there in a loft, I would probably say yes. You'd have to, right? Uh, you like, would have you'd to. have to. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if he looked like Brandon Lee. In that, yeah. Even before the goth get up, like, he was still rocking it, like... Preferably after, but yeah. yeah. I mean, preferably after, sure, but, like, I'm not gonna say no to that, because... Ooh, yeah. Or fuck, if Shelly proposed to me. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah, right? Like I'll take her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'd marry both of them at the same time. Oh, Trouble. wow, yeah. Did I say marry? I meant... <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'd be happy in whatever arrangement they wanted <laughs> oh for sure like you want me to just sit in the chair and watch all right oh my god <laughs> seriously guys Bo, stop it um, <laughs> i'll do color commentary like boy i didn't think her leg was gonna bend that way <laughs> i think she does yoga that was the wrong time to take a drink <laughs> It took all of my energy not to, like, spit take that, you know? <laughs> oh, I wish you had. Oh, my God. No, because it's, it's uh, I've got, I've done my, my Bailey, my chocolate Baileys and my uh, salted caramel cream liqueur kind of mixture. So that would have been real messy. Well, I was going to say, Kate, you don't peg me as somebody who spits. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where we just roast Kate. <laughs> Yeah, not unfairly though. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was, I was, <laughs> I was trying to make a pegging joke, but my brain just got scattered. <laughs> um, it's I, don't, I just don't that. peg you, Sabrina. <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so back at the pawn shop. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this is such a mistake. I'll just I'll, I'll take a I'll I'll, uh, I'll pull us back to the movie briefly and before we get to more pegging stories. <laughs> and uh, so he tells uh, this guy after he he finds the the ring. Hey, uh, I'm not going to kill you, but I want you to go tell all of T-Bird's gang that death is coming and that Eric Draven sends his regards. Oh, so cool. And as he's doing this, he's loading up this shotgun with a bunch of these rings. And he tells them, like, each one of these is a, a life stolen. And uh, the guy's like, ah, you know, they're going to make a grease state out of you, pup tart or whatever he calls him <laughs> i don't know and he and but there's a great moment where where brandon lee says oh is that gas i smell and then oh yeah it's so good in it yeah and it fires it blows up the pawn shop and you know uh joe Polito gets out the back so he can tell yeah his like realization up. after he says that as well like um like yeah get in whatever he's called it's like oh shit like um, and the way that it goes up, I was really amazed that actually he survived because I don't, I don't remember this bit at all um, on rewatch. So I was like, oh, he's fucked. Oh no, he survived. Okay, cool, good for him. <laughs> yeah, that was a yeah. big explosion. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hell of an explosion, but yeah, and it's a really good practical effect too. It, like, it's really good. Yeah, especially for back then, fucking CGI fire or whatever. I don't know if it was real or CGI, but. However they did it, it looked fucking great when normally it would look shit. Man, let me tell you while I'm thinking about it how much I love the models that they use for the city in this movie. Oh, oh I love fuck, it. yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so... In fact, I want to see if I can find some decent artwork of this movie with those kinds of like backdrops. And I mm. want to get some and frame it because, Jesus Christ, it is stunning. It's, mm -hmm. it's real good. Um, so good. All right. So after after Tin Tin's dead, after uh, sending the the pawn shop owner off to uh, deliver this message, um, the crow and uh, Eric then visit uh, Sarah's mom and Fun Boy, who are doing. Yeah, this is a fun little twist, which I didn't remember. The fact that hit her mom's fucking one of the gang members. Mm. Um, where she's doing all of the the gank. The yayo, um, <laughs> and you're so street though. I know uh, <laughs> the smack. I come. I, I come from the. I I don't come from the streets. I come from a cul-de-sac. <laughs> and... I literally thought you were gonna go. I come from the land down under. <laughs> oh, for some reason that's where my brain went. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go minute work and talk about how good the song Overkill is, I'm there for that conversation. <laughs> It's fucking epic, I ain't gonna lie. It's great. I tell you what, that would fit really well with this film. I can you can imagine. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overkill's a little a little goth. Pre goth. It's a pre goth it's a proto goth. Proto goth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I mean, sorry, I totally interrupted. Uh actually another great Colin Hay joint is uh waiting for my real life to begin. That's also a great song. <sighs> anyway. Um <laughs> So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it turns out that Fun Boy is called Fun Boy, uh, not just because he's a rapist, um, <laughs> but also because <laughs> apparently he like he likes the the smack, and so they end up. Uh, the, uh, Brandon Lee ends up uh, stabbing uh, him in the heart a bunch of times with the. Uh, the morphine and this is the the moment too where uh sarah's mom darla is freaked out and like has a straight razor and is like stay away from me and yeah, it was just so dumb because she's also seen him get shot multiple times and heal perfectly fine within seconds so i don't know what the fuck you're planning on doing love but she just did some hard drugs though cut her some slack right no i ain't i ain't cut no anything um <laughs> well, she's a dick. yeah kate rolls hard yeah and uh yeah and but uh, i i like this moment too where you know after he does the the line that we now know is from vanity fair um mm. a, as he says that the morphine just comes out of her veins it's so cool isn't mm -hmm. it? and um and he tells her like your daughter is out there on the streets waiting for you and and off she runs now no longer addicted to drugs which is i mean look 
I'm not saying that you should go to the Crow Rehab Center, but I'm saying I if, would. Yeah. Sign me up. I'm not even addicted. Sign me the fuck up. Results will be achieved. <laughs> so, yeah. I tell you what, that is something I will definitely finish. Mm. Oh, catch my drift. Okay. I get it. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, I'm I really it. glad you uh-huh. get it, though. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was being subtle with it. I felt like that, that was no. Like, it's no. pretty, pretty sneaky. It's real sneaky. <laughs> it's, that's my middle name, is Sneaky. Um, and, and subtle, too. Oh. Ah. Real low-key. I'm a low-key kind of person. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's also what I think of when I think of you, is real low-key. <laughs> um, all right, so we get to maybe in my top ten villains of all time. Uh, I just love this actor. He's so fucking great. And yeah. I'm so excited. Sorry, real, little, real quick, little kind of cutaway. He's in Nope coming out this mm-hmm. month. Oh. I'm so fucking here for it. Yeah. Uh, a, a guy named Michael Wincott, who is terrific. And, uh, so good. And Bai Ling, his, his half-sister, you know, uh, my father's daughter, he says. Um, my father's daughter. Yeah, because... I mean, I'm I'm sorry. Okay, look, I know incest. Incest is not good. We've covered this on our first episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Throwback. Mm-hmm. What? What? <laughs> Throwback Thursdays, literally. Yeah, some kissing um, cousins. Yeah. Yeah, some kissing cousins. But I feel like if your half sister looks like her, uh, uh, gray area. all right. So. Be- no comment. Because it's Bai Ling, you're like, well, maybe. Like, I mean, maybe they didn't grow up together. Maybe, like, uh, you know. Like, yeah. But it's still... They still share DNA. Yeah. It's, Kate- <laughs> it's the your head. same dad. Anyway. I, don't have, I don't have any brothers or sisters to get the full gross out factor. Yeah, I've got three siblings, so <laughs> we could put a pin in that. <laughs> That's what he was doing when we meet him. Uh, <laughs> as, it, it, but it's it's a great villain introduction because he's kind of waxing uh, poetic about the fact that, like, you know, boy, violence just ain't what it used to be, you know, and, and wanting <laughs> he's, to... He's so dramatic. Like, kind of recapture the magic of chaos. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, that. there is a naked woman in the bed that they have been sharing... And uh, Bai Ling, as his half-sister, is like, hey, how about we have a little more fun? And he reaches over to this girl and kind of turns her over from her side onto her back. And then you realize that she is wide-eyed, staring up at the ceiling, dead. And he says, I think we broke this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's such... Oh, there's just so many layers to that moment. Like, it just unpeels. Yeah, and so by Ling unpeels, that's not a word. decides that what is needed here is to remove her eyeballs for some kind of crazy ritual that she's going to do later. Yeah. And I love all of this. I think all of this is just horrified, and it's a great villain who is both into anarchy, incest, uh, <laughs> is not surprised there's a dead woman in his bed. <laughs> and is even less surprised when his half sister that he has been fucking decides that she is going to remove her eyeballs. Yeah, you know what I love is how the fact that he's fucking his half sister is the least weird thing about this whole scenario. <laughs> I uh, least weird. I mean, yeah, I would say least weird. I w- I will agree that it's not the most weird. But All I right. yeah, I'm with Bo on this. I think the. <laughs> I think the dead girl in bed is less weird than the incest. Oh, so necrophilia is your thing? <laughs> My thing? No. <laughs> but I'm saying no. I'm saying that in terms of so you would rather shocking, fuck your sister? No, you'd rather fuck a dead body than your sister. Is I, this what you're saying? Bro? That is probably true. <laughs> okay. I On mean, if I that's actually. I've never had to consider that question. Right. That's a great would you rather, isn't it? Would you rather fuck a dead body or would you rather fuck your sister? Do I get to pick the dead body? No. Oh. Well, if it looks like Brandon Lee, because technically he's dead. Oh, I would fuck the shit out of him. Hottest zombie ever. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know, actually. There's a few people who have come back from the, the dead in various TV shows who are rude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about Jesus? He's technically back You from know what? The Jesus dead. is fit. I'm not going to lie. He's got a real hipster look about him that I'm here for. It's a real Barry Gibb kind of vibe that I dig. No, um, wait, what? He's ripped, no. too. Mm-hmm. He is so ripped because you know, oh, yeah. have to do a lot of hard labor and shit. The Jesus joke in this, the Jesus in the hotel joke. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Was fucking gold. <laughs> so good. Yeah, yeah. It, he, he's telling it as... Uh, fun boy is shooting him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He says, Jesus Christ, because he doesn't die. <laughs> Stop me he... if you've heard this one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's a great moment. There, this movie is just loaded with like all these little lines and and gags that. I mean, if uh, anything, this film's a fucking comedy. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's a goth romantic comedy action. <laughs> It's a rom com. Goth so actually. Goth, goth actually. actually. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I feel like for goth, this is a comedy. Mm-hmm. I feel like goths sit around and watch this and they're just like, oh, yeah, we are like that. <laughs> you know? It's got relatable humor for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we can all relate to this film. Um, anyway, what were we, where were we at? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah. Brandon we're, Lee. Um, after after sending Sarah out to the streets, he goes to visit Ernie Hudson, who he has run into uh, previously after the death of Tintin. And this is where Ernie Hudson kind of tells him, like, oh, yeah, here's what happened to Shelley. She ended up surviving for about 30 hours. And uh, Brandon Lee, like, gives him a Vulcan mind meld kind of deal. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Like, there's no bound to his fucking power. He can he can cure people. Now, this is the thing. This is like a, it is a kind of a Jesus metaphor, isn't it? Because he can do all this shit, heal the fucking addicted, and he can take away people's pain. And well, it's, it's a bit of a fairy tale. Oh, it's a tell fucking fairy tale. It's a dark fantasy gothic rom com. Yeah, goth actually. pretty much sums it up yeah. in yeah. elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, he he gets the, like a full blast, and I actually really like Brandon Lee's reaction here, where he falls backwards pretty much from getting the full brunt of Ernie Hudson's time with Shelley, mm-hmm. and Ernie Hudson goes like reaches for him, and he yells, "Don't touch me!" <laughs> like I, you can't give me any more of that. Like the 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 pain. Mm that you were carrying uh, from all of that is, is too much. It's a very honest moment in the film. Like, cause a lot of the film is chaos and that's sort of a quiet moment where they talk about like, he wants to quit smoking and they talk about how he's getting a divorce. And it just kind of feels like this quiet moment that the rest of the film doesn't have that I actually, yeah. I quite liked. Yeah, I agree. I feel like their film, like this very kind of very roller coaster ride. It's lots of death. It's lots of angst. It's lots of pain. And, yeah, you're right. I feel that, and I feel like that's kind of um, that kind of is what Ernie Hudson's role brings to this film. It brings that kind of a quietness. A, it, it grounds you. Um, you know, he's kind of like the realism in amongst all of this fairy tale fantasy stuff. You know, mm-hmm. like and and as people who mostly don't live in fairy tales, like you do need to have that little bit of reprieve every now and then. And I think that's one of the many reasons why his character is just so like likable, um, and we kind of endear ourselves to him. Like, um, and he's he does such a good job. Of, like the actor does such a good job of the role because it's all so believable. And when you have these moments, like you know, like he's taken his memories, taken the, the emotions and the feelings and the pain um, from him, the performances, you know, with Brandon Lee and also Ernie Hudson, like they're so raw and so honest that even though it's a totally insane scenario, we are hundred percent with them and we believe and feel what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a real testament to both of them. I think, you know, those two actors together, I just think works so, so well. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I really like when I, Ernie Hudson like asks, like, are you a ghost? And there's kind of, you know, Brandon Lee being sort of self-aware of like, I don't really know what I am. Like, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't totally understand this, but 
I know what I have to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's really yeah, I think I, I, you're right. This is such a nice quiet moment in the middle of all of this like death and mayhem and whatnot. <laughs> um and there's kind of a on the back end of there's there's also that moment with Sarah when he's leaving and she almost gets run over and mm-hmm. he's kind of hiding himself from her and he of course reveals himself by her saying like I wish it would stop raining and he says I can't, well it can't rain all the time. Oh, it's such, such a cute we- line. It's such a cute line, and I love how, like, it comes back later on at the end. Yeah. It's so Mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) so then we get to my personal favorite death of the movie, which is Uh, (laughs) T-Bird, who is played by uh, John Patrick, David Patrick Kelly. I always get his name wrong. David Patrick Kelly, who was in the the original The Warriors. You know, he was the guy who said, Warriors, come out and play, yay. (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) yeah and uh it was in twin peaks and it has been in a million movies and is always like better than the part a lot of times like he's (laughs) okay he is definitely one of those actors yeah yeah he's just such a great weird actor that's real quirky and anyway but i like the the fact that he is uh he's a bargainer you know, of like, hey, I'm not mad that you 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 killed Ten Ten. Um, you know, hey, that's business, right? So tell me what you want. You know, we can work this out. This is cool. We can do this, even with a gun pointed to his head. You know, he's like, yeah. we we can figure this out. Like, we don't. He's this... still wheeling and dealing. Yeah. And the the part I like so much is when he he realizes who Brandon Lee is. When he's like, oh, I know you. I knew I knew you. I knew I knew you, <laughs> but it can't be you because you're dead. <laughs> and uh, and meanwhile, Brandon Lee is just duct taping this guy to his own, you know, <laughs> T-Bird, his souped up <laughs> muscle car, <laughs> and going through all of his, you know, fire setting devices in the trunk Yeah. Uh, to determine what is the most glorious way to send this guy to Valhalla speaking of Mad Max <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh and when he like stretches out the duct tape you know and his eyes just sort of like widen it's like oh shit <laughs> right right and and the line that I like so much is him just saying over and over again they're so coming back not in the really real world <laughs> The really real world. Yeah, it's the it, you'll be on the veil now, my friend. Right, but it's this childish like this. This it can't be you because you're dead, and that doesn't happen in the real world, and yeah. that is where we are. So this can't be happening. And... It's it's the kind of it's the type of thing you know when you're a kid, and you kind of hide under the covers like monsters aren't real, monsters aren't real, monsters aren't real, and you know logically the monsters aren't real and they're not going to be able to get you, but that it doesn't. But in the dead of night. Monsters are real. Mm-hmm. You're and still not sticking your foot out from behind, uh, from under the blanket. Fuck, you know what? I'm 34 and I still don't do that shit because I'm not a crazy person. Oh, I am a crazy person. Yeah, well, you're just all kinds of weird. It's all right. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I don't do that. I don't give a fuck. I'm not letting my fucking feet. Sometimes, sometimes, in fact, I'm fucking doing it now. I don't even like my feet down the edge of the sofa. I have to, I have to sit cross-legged on the, on the actual sofa. Um, <laughs> and that's how I'm sat right now. Um, because that just freaks me out a little bit. Not gonna lie. Or like you know when you go up a stairs and then you run real fast because you could have sworn something's at your fucking feet. So it's like it's like the fucking the the slip of a veil. Do you know what I mean? Like it's uh, you know like the drawing back of the veil between the two worlds, between the nightmare world and the real world. At night, those things. It doesn't matter how logical everything seems during the day. It doesn't matter how rational your mind is, and you're like, no, that does, that's not fucking real. That's stupid like there is a part of you you still run up the stairs you still run up the stairs you still put your feet under the cover because just in case and i feel like that that's that's what that taps into when he says the really real world you know like mm-hmm. it's that sort of you know as you say but very fucking it's a very childish sort of sentiment but when you're scared and when you're faced with something that you can't explain it's it seems like a very natural reactant reaction sorry to like kind of go back to like delve back into that childish state of mind when you're a kid or you know as a 34 year old adult um, (laughs) of like not of like keeping your feet under the duvet 
you know, not mm-hmm. opening the closet door just in case there's something in there. Uh, speaking of closet doors, mine fell off. <laughs> so my closet is now wide open. As we found out last episode with your story. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Brandy, <laughs> she's married with kids now. So that, oh, that sh- oh to yeah. A, to a male? Oh, yeah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's fine. It is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> nice follow up. Oh, fuck! I nearly dropped my laptop. Uh, so yeah, so we've got uh, we've got T Bird. Yeah, and so yeah, so he in uh, to kill him. Uh, Brandon Lee opens up, you know, a central a, like a phosphorus grenade or something like that. Uh, it's basically a you know Roman candle on steroids that he tucks <laughs> in this guy's crotch. Ah, oh, so good. And then. <laughs> you know forces his foot down on the pedal so yeah. that he essentially goes off the end of a pier but before he can hit the water he and the car explode another glorious stunt in this movie mm-hmm. and uh and when the police show up i like the moment of like ernie hudson's you know detective pal is like hey we can't figure out who this guy is the dental work hasn't come back yet and he's like oh yeah that's t-bird don't, don't <laughs> even worry about it i got you yeah 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 because he fucking knows this shit he's this this fucking case and like even without like you know his involvement with with eric and shit like he'd know that stuff because he's a fucking good cop whereas this guy is just a it's just a fucking suit and briefcase mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh so there's uh, we we mentioned this briefly earlier, but there's the bit with Sarah and her mom who is now cleaned up and wants to make some eggs uh, for her <laughs> daughter. Uh, it doesn't know how. Well, she's like, how do you like them? I, I don't remember. you." And uh, Sarah's like, I don't even like eggs anymore. I was five years old when you made eggs for me last time. Darla. I like how she <laughs> yeah. hammers that name home. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, like Sabrina was saying, there was a real olive branch kind of moment where Darla's about to throw the eggs out and she's like, no, no, sunny side up. That's how I like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, anyway, so after that, uh, Sarah goes to the abandoned apartment of Eric and Shelly and there she sees him, uh, and you know, it's like, I really missed you and, you know. As we find out later in a, d- a discussion with Ernie Hudson, um, Brandon Lee basically tells her, like, hey, we can't be friends anymore on account of me being dead. But <laughs> but I still care about you, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make things better for you. And meanwhile, news has floated up to the top where Top Dollar is now hearing about all his guys being picked off. And Skank, the remaining member of the original crew of you know thugs and rapists that killed eric and shelly has come back to report like hey you know th- this guy uh along with joe polito who has another great michael wincott moment is uh joe polito telling him like oh yeah the guy said his name's eric draven and michael wincott just stabs him in the neck with this sword yeah <laughs> <laughs> and as yeah he sure had a thing for swords yeah mm. but as like joe polito was like choking on and you know gurgling <laughs> on the sword and blood michael went got just says fucking die will ya and borrows tony todd's gun and shoots him yeah oh what a great villain they have in this movie but yeah so He's, yeah no patience for anything yeah can't and, even let someone die in their own like in their own good time. <laughs> Just like time is money, people. Bang. Yeah, I thought this was going to be faster. Yeah, um, I stabbed you in the fucking neck. What the fuck? Oh, you know what? Just let me fucking do it. Bang. Yeah, how dare you have the audacity to suffer <laughs> to die? <laughs> exactly. Cancel my two p.m. This is t- this guy. This guy. <laughs> fucking his, him and his fucking neck wound. You know? uh, but yeah, so. Uh, Tony Todd, who plays Grange in this movie, who's kind of, you know, the the right-hand man. I forgot Tony Todd was in this, and I was like, oh my god, it's Tony Todd! Oh. Like, my note is, even, what does it say? Like, he says, fucking forgot Tony Todd was in this! All caps, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, All if caps. you want to win a horror nerd bar bet, 
right. ju- just give somebody enough time and be like, I will bet you that Tony Todd is in the crow and somebody will tell you, you are full of shit. Um, he's not in it that much. I would that be much, that person but... until like two days ago. Yeah. I watch it again. I was the same ago. way. I was like, I cannot believe I I keep forgetting. And every time I see it, I think the same thing. Tony Todd is in this. Yeah, right. It seems so unlikely, but at the same time, he fits it well. Yeah. And uh, he's just the stylish right-hand man who's got a great hat. Um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, but he's kind of sniffing around about what's going on, and um, finds uh, you know not just Skank uh, who lets him know that T Bird is now dead, but also that you know there could be something supernatural afoot. And uh, yeah, so then there's a big meeting of all the bad guys where Michael Wincott has a great speech about. Um, how, you know, now they make devil's night greeting cards and that was never <laughs> the plan. It's just, this is so mainstream. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly an interesting, like, I was like kind of agreeing with him. I'm like, oh yeah, every time that somebody tries to make like, you know, a charity or, uh, you know, change, people make it into like a capitalistic, um, money maker. And I thought that was yeah. interesting in this situation where they're like, we just want anarchy. Yeah. It's it's funny, isn't it, when you can relate to the bad guy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He keeps and you saying, feel like you should take a look at yourself, but no, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, his whole point is the idea has become the institution, and and what we are trying to to do is 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 be anti institutionalist and be anarchist. And yeah. uh, he says, you know, you know, we'll make a fire so big the gods have to acknowledge us again. Oh, such a great line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So great. This film is basically like, it's essentially just, you know, an hour, 40 minutes of punks versus goths. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, but that's also the problem is that goths will come back from the dead on you. <laughs> they will. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They'll cling on to that shit. Whereas punks are just, they're too nihilistic to care that much. Uh, yeah. A punk will curb stomp you, but. There is no coming back uh, if, if you're a punk, you know? No. Uh, not even the misfits will come back from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it, it's a big shootout action scene where Brandon Lee shows up and asks for Skank. And Michael Winka is like, ah, I can't give him to you. And so he says, all right, you've made your decision. And then goes about murdering everyone in this place. <laughs> it's a good scene. <laughs> it's so great. And Vi Ling kind of gets the idea, like after seeing The Crow, that accompanies Brandon Lee everywhere, is like, oh, I think I know what's going on here. And She's definitely a witch. Oh, like with the whole oh, eyeball yeah. thing and whatnot. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, like, I really like how initially we sort of, like, see her as kind of a bit of eye candy, a bit of arm candy or whatever for Top Dollar. But, like, then it's like, oh, no, shit, she got, she has power. Mm -hmm. You know, she has, like, intelligence and wisdom and, and, you know. And there's an interesting parallel between, like, them taking out the eyes and then, like, the crow is Eric's eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some eye symbolism there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't pick up on that. But and the crow takes sure. out her eyes. Yeah, like I saw like the, the sort of symbolism between like the taking of the eyes. Not symbols, the, the sort of parallels of like taking mm-hmm. the eyes, but like I didn't sort of connect it back to how Brandon would see through the crow's eyes as well. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I like it. The eyes are the windows to the soul or something. Yeah. That sounds pretty goth, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I, I like to go with the nipples of the for the eyes and the nipples of the face or something. That's like I'm, another one. I'm sorry, what? Isn't like the... Hang on. The eyes of the nipples of the face. <laughs> what, the is, face. what is that from? It's from... <laughs> it's from so, House Bunny. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> House Bunny is funny. Look, I, but like I was... I was uh, oh, yeah, it's a great film. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Is that Emma why Stone is her funniest in this film? Is that why you asked for photos of my nipples? <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina, do we have to air all our dirty laundry on this fucking show? <laughs> so if well... if nipples are the eyes of the face, are nipples the eyes of the boobs? 
Yeah, like the eyes of the nip. Wait, the boobs of the. Wait. So I can't that. say my eyes are up here if my nipples are exposed. Right, exactly. But I feel Shit. like if your nipples are exposed, then I don't know. I think you need to kind of just deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> you got some great nipples. What can I say? Well, thank you. But also, I just wanted to see the piercings. It wasn't even about your tits. It was about the piercings. Fuck <laughs> you. That was a bit about your tits. Uh, that yeah, be, we're on that level. <laughs> it really should be the the tagline of this show. It's a bit about your tits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I consent to that. Uh, okay, cool. As long as you do consent, it's all very important here. There will be no photo attached. Sure. No, 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 no. no. Of course not. That's Kate exclusive. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the idea. They're, you know, fantasy nipples. Mm. Um, I... Yeah. <laughs> But listeners, they're great. Just an FYI. They're spectacular. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to deny it. Fair no, enough. Good, good boobage. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, eyes yeah. and nipples uh, to the face, nipples, eyes. Eyes. Crows. Eye stuff. Like <laughs> eyes being pulled out of their, uh, of their sockets. Eye stuff is what I'm into. We, um, <laughs> we, we ended in a very different place to where we began, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> that's again the journey of the show I, the, which yeah. i like so i feel like me and bo do this a lot but it's even worse as sabrina in the mix <laughs> um, whose idea was this honestly mine actually it was yeah. yours. all right that's i feel that's good that's any you to blame then good so uh so he kills skank in the midst of all this bloodshed and um so brandon lee is like okay job is done i've killed everyone that i need to time to head back to the graveyard and uh wait for you know the sun to rise and then apparently i will die again and uh he finds sarah there who's like hey i figured you would come back here so i was waiting for you because you weren't gonna say goodbye and brandon lee is like well you're just gonna have to forgive me for that <laughs> like hey yeah. you know um it's just how the supernatural world works i guess and uh but he gives her the engagement ring that it's he... such a cute moment yeah it is uh and and tells her like hey i gave this to shelly once and i really think she would like it if you had it now and mm. so it's a really nice moment where brandon lee is at the grave of his now dead lover uh sarah is leaving uh putting behind her this tragic past going home to a mother who is no longer addicted to morphine but wouldn't you know it on her way home she gets snatched up by tony todd <laughs> um as will happen <laughs> it will yeah um, it does yeah it, not a lot of people know this but like 10 percent of all kidnappings are tony Todd. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like we could get in trouble for this <laughs> um allegedly that's how allegedly. you yeah allegedly <laughs> so, yeah that's slander <laughs> yeah if you say allegedly it's fine if you say that yeah <laughs> my girlfriend's a lawyer i know all about this and, uh, I saw the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. I know all about this. Objection. Sure. <laughs> Hearsay. Yeah, sustained. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, he takes her to this church where uh, Top Dollar and his incestuous lover sister are hanging out. <laughs> and um, as they're taking her inside, the crow sees what's going on. And now Brandon Lee knows what's up. And he goes after her to rescue her. Um, yeah. And goes inside. The crow flies in ahead of him. It's this great shot of him walking down the aisle of this church as the crow flies in beside him. It's it's iconic. It's like as well, like we didn't mention it earlier, but you know the bit where like he's in the window and we have this like zoom out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, like, and it's just like his silhouette in the window and it's just all these really fucking cool buildings and of course it's fucking raining and oh my god this is that's the good. photo i want like framed on my mm -hmm. wall like that one there i need yeah. his perfect physique his mm -hmm. willowy physique as i think you called him Bo. yeah mm -hmm. but he's like willowy then broad yeah timothy chamelay will get that one day yeah i don't get the hype with him but that's another story that's the thing. Like, one day he'll get that he's, <laughs> a, he's a scamp um <laughs> so yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it's really good. The fucking whole, the whole fucking, any, anything like that, I'm just, yeah, I love it. Yeah, this bit particularly when he's walking down with the fucking crap. Oh, so good. So good. So, Tony Todd then shoots the crow because he was kind of perched up with his sniper rifle. And- yeah, and um, Bailing has said, like, before, like, oh, yeah, basically, you kill the crow, you kill him. Because until now, Eric's been essentially invinci- inv- invincible. Yeah. In- and because he gets his power from the crow, and she's kind of worked this out through her witchy ways. And she's like, right, kill the crow, you can kill the guy. And also she says that there somehow or another there's a way that they can take this power of the crow and kind of redistribute it to top dollar. And mm. uh mm-hmm. and and that like that that was said in the car ride and that's where Michael Wincott says, I like this guy already. Um <laughs> yeah. so my favorite Michael Wincott moment of the whole movie, and I have many but the absolute peak is him walking in after the crow has been shot mm. and saying, quick impression for you. <laughs> <laughs> call, call, bam, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. It's, just, it's, it's really unexpected. Yeah, that's the I comedy in this. I know film. it's it's so good. I told you it's a fucking comedy. Yeah, if it was at Golden Globes, it'd be cast as a comedy. Uh, Goth actually, Goth actually, <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, but so uh, now, in yeah, Michael Wincott shoots uh, Brandon Lee, and there's a really great moment where he's like, "Aha! Oh, ow! Oh shit! I am not, I am not invincible anymore. This is not great." And yeah. uh, so he's a uh, top dollar is about to kill Brandon Lee for real. Bai Ling grabs the crow. This is your all is lost moment where our hero is at his absolute lowest point. But then Ernie Hudson rushes in to save him from death. And there's a big uh, gunfight that ensues. And um, Ernie Hudson kills Tony Todd. But Bai Ling and uh top dollar have escaped up to the the spire uh the bell tower in this church and there's a great bubble where ernie hudson is like oh i have a great plan you're gonna walk in front of me and (laughs) you take all the bullets and then i'll just shoot anybody that needs shooting and he's like yeah that's a great plan except you know all the blood um so anyway uh you know, there's a, a bit with Bai Ling where uh, she is uh, attacked by the crow, has her eyes plucked out by the crow. Yeah. And falls to her death down the uh, the bell tower. And then... Oh, that's really cool, isn't it? It's, I mean, that's how I want to go. No, I want to go by Jamie Dornan as a serial killer, str- straddling me and choking me to death, but, you know, that's all right. We have different tastes. You know how that's I fine. feel about birds. <laughs> Men who look like birds. <laughs> Wes Bentley. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Wes, Wes Bentley. Wes Bentley, yeah, you know Wes Bentley, the actor. I know, yeah, I know who he, he is. He looks like but... a bird. He looks like a bird. No, I have and... a thing for Sam Riley. Yeah, um, you who plays a literal bird in Maleficent. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, I know. Yeah, Sabrina who has Sam a thing Riley for is. guys who looks like who look like He's birds. in Byzantium. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Uh-huh. Yeah, plays the love interest of Jim Robson. He well, is. I wouldn't call him a love kind interest. Kind of love. But... Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Oh, he loves her, doesn't he? He's the other vampire. One yeah, of the but... other vampires. Yeah, but he he loves her. Yeah. Yeah, he was in uh, Rebecca. I haven't seen oh. that yet because I want to read the book and I'm halfway. Well, no, I'm about a third of the way through the book. <laughs> I left it about a year ago, I think. I need mm. to get back to it, really. Uh okay yeah he was in Pride and Prejudice, Prejudice and Zombies as well he uh, I wasn't a fan of that yeah it's I not great. yeah didn't like the book or the movie liked the movie more than the book though mm. I didn't even finish the film I don't remember anything about it there you go exactly yeah um, it, it's a it's a it's yeah it was mediocre at best <laughs> at best so uh we were oh yeah so Biling is now dead. <laughs> 
Um, Brandon Lee and Top Dollar have a fight on the roof of this church. That's uh, a great mm-hmm. part when he takes that uh, metal church thing. Oh, sorry, I've never been to church. I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that metal thing on the on the roof of the church. Uh, <laughs> the the spire? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I think Maybe. that's right. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, sure. me Kate comes through with the knowledge. The architecture is divine. <laughs> um Yeah, it's a good bit. It's a good bit. And and here we learn that Top Dollar was actually the guy who ordered the death of uh you know, Shelly and Eric. So, um, he is the real, uh, the, 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 Kingpin. right. And I don't feel like this is a big reveal because I do feel like this is obvious all the way through. Do you not think that he wouldn't have like Eric wouldn't have been able to rest if he hadn't killed him? Yeah. Right. Okay. He would have thought he was going to die again. And then like the sun would come up and he'd be like, huh? Well, that's I'm weird. Not done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like he was. It was kind of obvious that that was the scenario, the whole time. Like, yeah, this is what we're aiming for. It's it's hard for me to think back to a time when I did not know. Like, I, I don't know if I was surprised by that at the end of the movie the first time I saw it. You know. Yeah, I just feel like. I mean, maybe if I was like in that world, but like as a as an audience member, we wouldn't be following this guy so much if he wasn't, like, Tied in charge in. of it all. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't think that like, detracts from me, the though. scene. No, no, it doesn't yeah. bother me at all. Like, it really doesn't bother me, but it's just kind of like, oh, that's a surprise? Oh, okay, cool. Like, can we get back to the fighting? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> speaking of back to the fighting, it looks like uh, Brandon Lee is about to be killed by Top Dollar. Oh, he says, what does he say to him? He's just like, oh, can I just tell you something? Like, you know, you, I can't remember exactly. He's like, you, like, you're a really good guy. Uh, like, not a good guy, but like, you're entertaining and you made me smile. If that's any consolation, you made me smile. <laughs> like, nah, bro, he fucking hates you. It'd be a consolation if you made his day fucking miserable, but all right. And, I just fucking love it, though. <laughs> and I actually, I really like the resolution of this where to, uh, you know, sort of, save himself and kill the villain uh he you know grabs him by the head and Mm. gives him all 30 hours of Mm shelly's pain so good uh which is maybe the most goth way to kill someone Mm -hmm. but he but like not only 30 hours but it's not even spread out over 30 hours it's 30 hours in about three fucking seconds yeah all at once right yeah Yeah, all at once so it's just kind of like like 10 times the dosage is very good. Your math is awful, but yeah, we'll go with that. My math <laughs> is on point. Fuck you. It's, it's the metric system. It's hard to figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm on like the metric 30, system. <laughs> it's 30 hours and it's in like three seconds. Oh, wait, no. It's fine. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> such a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Look, it's it's fucking four a.m. and I am about six drinks in. So we know math is hard. You don't need to count your drinks. (laughs) Shut up. Um, All right. So to wrap up the movie, uh, yeah. So uh, Brandon Lee goes back to the grave. Um, uh, Sarah gets the engagement ring back, and um, as the crow kind of flies off into the night, then you get the last line of the movie, uh, which is if the people we love are stolen from us, the way to have them live on is to never stop loving them. Buildings burn, people die, but real love is forever. Gross. So cute and disgusting. And, yeah. and that's it. That that is that's all of cute. all of Der Crow, as it was called in Germany. Der Crow. <laughs> it's not called the same ring here though, no. I'm pretty sure that's right. Is and, it Le Cro in France? Yeah, it's Le, Le Cro. Um, in, <laughs> in Italy, it was Il Cro. Il Cro. Um, and um, that's all the languages I know. Yeah. What about Spanish? El Cro. El Cro, <laughs> of course. El Guys, Cro. is Cro Cro in every language? Yeah. I feel yes, like it's, it's not. It's like Coca Cola. 
That's right. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. It's exactly true <laughs> in every language. Yes, even Japanese. <laughs> right. Um, and there, there it's just uh, croissant. Croissant. <laughs> I thought you were saying croissant. <laughs> no, that's France. <laughs> croissant. That's a whole different movie. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's just about oh, flaky what? pastries. <laughs> <laughs> With jam. Eh, you know. Maybe just yeah. a nice butter glaze, a honey butter glaze. Or some almond. Chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate drizzle. Oh, uh, sure. No, that's a pan au chocolat. That's not even a croissant. Then. That's a pan au chocolat. Well, I'm Dutch, and we would call that a croissant with chocolate on it. Mm. <laughs> Fine, be basic. Or maybe a, a scone. Ooh. No, yeah, a scone. Le scone. Um, anyway, <laughs> the point yeah, is topic. that, uh, yeah, so that is goth actually. Goth actually is a goth <laughs> dream, I'll tell you what. And, um, and Brandon I- Lee's smile is so good as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, when he's got the memory and stuff of like all the kids and shit and he just smiles and it's just like, it's kind of eerie, but like so delightful. And... There's moments of wholesomeness throughout this film, like yeah. when he sees those kids like, having fun and mm-hmm. just his his things he says to Sarah and it's just, it's wholesome it and is. gritty and you, at the same time. And you could just tell like that before everything happened when he was like a real living, when he was a real boy. When he was like a living guy and he was just like, he was probably like misunderstood or whatever. And he was like, maybe had like some hard shit going down, but he was, he was a good man and he had Mm -hmm. light in his life and he had good stuff going on. And then that one night just eradicated all of that. And then he had to become this like vengeful spirit and, you know, but with these, through these flashbacks and through the moments, like, you know, when he's with Sarah and shit and like the kids or whatever, like. You can you get these glimpses of who he once was, and it's like I I kind of I do understand why um, why this film is like an homage to Brandon Lee as a person. Not only was it obviously the last film that he did, but I feel like the character of Eric before he became this vengeful spirit is an homage to Brandon Lee, just because there's such purity to it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's really lovely, and he's fit as fuck. <laughs> can't argue that can't get too emotional with it i have to bring it back sure um uh sabrina how about final thoughts for, on the crow and you know all of love well i like i said i feel like the love in this film i could feel it i could see it i could vibe with it like i think this is a much better romance than the notebook which is super problematic <laughs> Let me, all right, oh God, I've said this before. That. Let me say this about The Notebook. I got to get the, every time somebody brings it up, I got to get this off my chest. The Notebook is all about an old dude who decides that he's going to die rather than live his life with his children and grandchildren. It's just like, to hell with all of you. I'm going to go <laughs> up to this, you know, re- uh, the, uh, the senior citizen's home bed and just decide to die. I, I find it to be very troublesome. I haven't seen it. It's I, the furthest from my type of film. You haven't seen The Notebook? No, I haven't seen P.S. I Love You. I haven't seen... Oh, I, well, I haven't you're seen not missing Fantastic out on much. Life. Just keep watching movies like The Crow, and that's all I'm you gonna, need for a I'm romance. I'm gonna, honestly, like that Byzantium, you know, like, I'm I'm happy with my choices, movie-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> movie-wise, anyway. Um, but like I, uh, you know, yeah, like I, I just, I don't, I don't know about these films. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you that they are probably problematic. And you know what? He, Eric dies on her grave, and it's so fucking cute. Oh my god, yeah. You can't get more goth than that. Like mm. when I die, then, I want somebody to come and, die on my grave. She come. I'll come and die on your grave. Aw. See what? I'll die and then come on your grave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, it's a deal. Is that why she's got? Is that why she's wearing white? That that dress was not white to begin with. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Kate, it's a really pretty dress, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else want to want to take the deal I, on that? <laughs> I kind of feel like that's where we should end it. 
<laughs> that was uh, Kate coming on my grave. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the dress not being white initially, all of that. <laughs> she has a real glow about her. I don't know if anyone else knows. Yeah, I I did. So. It was yeah, it was endorphins, and yeah, um, you can put it down to a glo- ghostly glow, but we know really. All right, I will. <laughs> I will. I'm sorry. No, no, no. What are you apologizing for? This is the this is the gold, baby. I'm um, fucking so drunk right now. I've drank so much. So this is what happens when we have someone else because they talk and then it gives me more time to drink. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. It yeah, um, is a problem. <laughs> Sabrina, you're banned. Oh, <laughs> uh, jokes, jokes. So I, I, I think the crow totally holds up. I think it's a wonderful movie. I, I, you know, it's a fantasy. It's a wonderful goth, actually fantasy, and <laughs> I love everything about it. Um, and yeah, I feel like we've covered a lot of great ground. I think people have learned a lot, and um, been Too entertained. Much, I might say. <laughs> And honestly, I would say that people listening to this, if they made it through the entire episode without <laughs> taking their pants off, <laughs> then they are to be commended because there was there was sexiness everywhere. Whether, unless, they're they're wearing, unless they're wearing leather pants because those are really hard to take off. Yeah. They the, are really hard to take off. People, don't forget the talcum powder. You right. know, <laughs> powder up before you put on the leather and the latex. Very important. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Sabrina, thank you so much for yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Being like... a, a willing participant in this. <laughs> it's so Always. rare we get one of those, eh, Bo? <laughs> yeah. Usually we're Tony Todd and people right off the streets. <laughs> you can Tony Todd me any day. Oh, Great. I can't. I'm not anywhere near you. Bo has a better chance of that. He's only down the road by comparison. <laughs> I don't. Fuck, fuck I, sake. I don't think, Kate, that what you think Tony Totting means and what I think t- Tony Totting means are the same thing. No, I think they are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe so. We'll see how it goes. Um, I love a surprise. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I was going to say a joke, but it's so horrible. I won't. I might just say it off air. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say it because it could really be offensive to some people. I'm not going to say it. Um. Okay. So, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Sabrina. Um. Uh, aside from the thanks for joining us, uh, do you want to uh, your books? Like, what what do you want to pimp here? <laughs> uh. Well, I guess I could just let people know I've got a couple of books. Um. They are essentially goth fairy tales. <laughs> Perfect. Um, are they sexy goth fairy tales? Yes. The th- th- not the first two. The third one that's not out yet will be. Great. That's so the one you, as well that I alluded to earlier with like the crow. You got to stick yeah. around. You got to stick around for a while for that one. But yeah, if you search my name, Sabrina Vorman, you'll find me pretty much all the platforms. That's, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing. Uh, and where, where can people get these books? Amazon. Amazon okay. is probably the easiest place. All Book right. Depository. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so if you look at the show notes, we'll have a link in the show notes for that. Yeah. Awesome. And as well, like, I know I'm Sabrina's friend and shit, but, um, as someone, so our friendship came from me reading her first book, like trying to find her first book cause it had only just been released and then reading it and then loving it. Um, so my initial impression wasn't at all biased in any way, uh, but these are genuinely good books. They're so well written and they have really wonderful worlds created within them. And even though they are kind of retellings of fairy tales, they are so elevated beyond what the fairy tales that we are familiar with. And they really just encompass this whole new world that is just so exciting to get into. So if you are a fan of any kind of like historical fairy tale stuff like that, I could not recommend these books more. Like, please, please, please go check them out. Oh, thank you. Great. Uh, Kate, what would you like to uh, promote? Oh, fuck. As usual, um, my eternal... Wait. <laughs> so Ednism. What, we've, yeah, Ednism. So Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds. Um, we've had a bit of a hiatus lately just because I've moved home. I've had no internet. We've both been on holiday. Matt's had COVID. So there's been a whole bunch of like life stuff, you know, my breakup and shit as well. 
um so like we've had a whole bunch of shit to deal with between us um so um we have had a bit of a hiatus for a, a couple of months but we are going to be back full swinging i think we're going to have about three episodes this month to make up for it um two of which will be dropping very soon so yeah just check it out our uh, facebook page you can find under esanism which is just an acronym um and you can also do the same on instagram as well so yeah check it out check out the show it's all on the usual platforms go listen it's fun and silly and good <laughs> i can agree to that yeah see sabrina says so it must be true <laughs> great uh, and as always, we will be back in a week with a new episode of the Dark Parade. Uh, next week will be a movie episode, uh, which where occasionally we just talk about movies and not all the the stuff about doing it, um, <laughs> as as scientists call it. Uh, doing it, do it, yeah, um, yeah. I've got a cousin of mine who's a a, a doing dietitian. And he studies it exclusively. Uh, well respected uh, awesome. career choice. Yes. Hey guys, could I get his number? Yeah. <laughs> guess what's funny? The sun's coming up for me. All right. Yeah, we'll call it there. All right. Thanks everybody for listening, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next month with a new Heart of Horror. Next week for a new episode of the Dark Parade. Uh, see you then. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.